bitter taste of defeat certainly acted as a spur for Richmond as they approached their 73 grand final rematch with Carlton. The previous year, 72, it had been the highest scoring in history and one that Richmond had been confident of winning. In 73, the Tigers had one of their great sides. Under Tom Hafey, they had gathered a team that would finish second on the ladder to Collingwood, recover from a qualifying final loss to Carlton by beating St Kilda and Collingwood, and then emerge on grand final day as flag favourites. Watch out for a whole raft of stars over the next few hours. Dick Clay, Francis Burke, Ian Stewart, what a player, three Brownlows, Sheedy, Hart, Balm, the whale Brian Roberts, and little KB, Kevin Bartlett. This was the game in which Laurie Fowler would make a name for himself and leave John Nichols flat out on the MCG. No mean feat and a pretty big hit. Carlton had their fair share of heroes. Jezelinko, Wall, Southby, Duell, Crane, McKay, Jones and Croswell. There were two mighty teams vying for the Premiership and it was a game that didn't let down the 116,000 that packed into the MCG. For those of you who enjoy classical football, this has plenty to offer. The artistry of Hart and Stewart, the dogged determination of Crane and Sheedy, the brilliance of Bartlett and the aerial work of Mackay and Walls. This is one of my top 20 grand finals and part of the WEG grand final collection on DVD from Australian Football Video. The BFL Grand Final 1973, Carlton versus Richmond. Nichols of Carlton won the toss and the Blues are kicking to the Richmond or outer end and of course Richmond up to the scoreboard end. This is Michael Williamson in Melbourne at the MCG welcoming you. There's Sheedy with the ball for the Tigers. He gets a hand pass over to Bartlett and the Tigers go forward now for the first time. The ball hits the ground, it's taken by Wood. Wood a long hand pass across here and they're going in pretty hard as you can see. Stephen Ray of Richmond with the ball. Gets it to Bartlett on the half forward flank. He's grabbed by Cotaggio. No whistle, they're still scrambling and are they going in? Look at this. Bob Skilton, triple Brownlow medalist, who joins me for the 1973 Grand Final. Bobby, can you pick up any positional changes? Well, Carlton have got quite a few, Mike. We'll talk up. about it in a moment as Walsh puts the ball forward. He's kicked off line, it goes close to the boundary line. It's just touched before it. No, it's out on the full. Free kick to be put back into play by Walsh of Carlton. No, Walsh is being told to give the ball further downfield to be taken by Byrne. Byrne is one of the changes, Mike. He's gone to the back pocket. Field umpire is Ian Robinson doing his first grand final. Bob. As Byrne puts the ball straight up towards the centre of the ground. The Richmond runner got in the way of Robert Wall. Stewart comes through, but he fumbled the ball. Walls takes it, picks it up and puts it forward onto the half forward line. Cotaggio can't quite get there. It bounces just before the line and out uh, over and out of bounds. Uh, on the other changes, Michael, uh, uh, O'Connell was picked in the back pocket, is playing in the centre. Gary Crane picked in the centre, is playing on the wing. Jezelinko picked at full forward, is half forward, and Davis has gone from half forward to full forward. As Jezelinko picks it up, kicks it straight across the ground. It's a, it's a case of the pace here as Dick Clay streams away, has one bounce, runs through the centre, has another bounce, a long kick. It's a poor kick, though, and it goes straight to Vin White. White at centre half back. About to drive the Tigers out. Wait a left footer. Kicks up towards the centre. Bartlett's in front there, but he couldn't quite pull it down. But he's still going. Recovers well. Bartlett down into the forward zone. Balm sets himself. Ball knocked away by Southby. A chance for Sproul, but over the line it goes. There'll be a throw in. A throw in midway between the forward pocket and half forward flank for Richmond on the outer side. They're kicking up to the scoreboard end. Jones 28 for Carlton. Green 37 for Richmond. Up they go. The tap down, it's taken there by Jones. Jones kicks out to the halfback flank on that outer side. The ball almost smothered, but it's uh, across here to Crane. Crane of Carlton picks up, puts it to the wing position proper on that outer side. Here's Jessalenko breaking clear. Jessalenko deep into the forward zone. Big Nichols is there. Up he goes. Oh! Nichols is down. Nichols is down. And the ball will be brought back. Now Nichols is 
25 metres out directly in front, but he's pretty seedy. He's been through this before. A little bit staggery. Waiting for the ball to be returned. Well, there you can see his reflexes. Not coordinated. Now there's been a 15-yard penalty. So Nichols is only about 25 metres out. He kicks... And the result, it's a goal. The first goal of the 1973 grand final for John Nichols, captain and coach of Colton at the four minute mark. Well, Bobby, that was a pretty tough encounter, that one. Well, I was about to say, Mike, you could say earn it the hard way. Colton, first blood, Colton, not first blood, but uh, first score on the board, one goal straight, Richmond yet to score. John Nichols in the hands of the trainer there. It's hard to say just how groggy Nichols would be after that one. He was obviously feeling the effects as the ball came back. And from the bounce in the centre, it's forced forward by Jones and then Hall, taken by Kane. Kane's kicked straight across the ground towards the wing where it's Crane and Walsh. Both players lost in position. Walsh beats Crane it, drives the ball further down the ground and finds Carter. Ooh. Carter diving down and a good mark taken by the young Richmond Rover. Carter playing only his second game. Carter's on the half forward line, goes for the short one where Sheedy left unattended, slipped, but fortunately was able to recover and take that mark. Sheedy on the half forward line, or short of half forward now, only 35 to 40 metres from goal, a 45 degree angle as you can see on the screen. Taking plenty of time, kick, it looks good, it'll be close to the line, it might even be through. It is through, it's full points. And the score's a little with that goal from Sheedy. A real pressure goal. One that Richmond were really looking for to answer that quick goal of Nichols. One goal apiece. And Richmond's first goal came up at the 5 minute and 20 second mark into the first quarter. So there we have it. One goal each and we're coming up now towards the 6 minute mark in the first quarter back in the center it's umpire ian robinson bouncing the ball jones is set there and he taps the ball down taken by dixon he can't get a clear in comes crosswell couldn't uh, get away with the ball there's plenty of jostling there and umpire robinson decides on a bounce slightly into richmond's territory only a few meters though still in the diamond as you can well see up they go jones gets a tap away here a chance for walsh walsh racing for it bartlett's after him but Walsh uh, keeps his balance, kicks the half-forward flank on that outer side. There's a race for the ball, just a link going. Young Kane over the line, there'll be a throw, and Carlton's half-forward flank on the outer side of the ground. Boy, what a crowd, what an atmosphere, the 73 grand final. Roberts now coming in with Mackay, neither gets a clear tap down. Roberts uh, hooks the ball around there, though. Nobody able to break clear with it until it's Kane picking up. Kane of Richmond gets it up towards a half-forward flank. Swings in towards centre half forward, taken there by uh, Crosswell. Bit of sleeping going on, and Crosswell might get a free kick out of this, although he probably doesn't deserve it. Why do you say that, Mike? Uh, well, you saw the play, Bob. I'll let the viewers decide for themselves. I thought it was weight that was, it wasn't a weight to what Crosswell was doing, actually, as Crosswell puts oh, it straight that up could the be a free kick. You couldn't miss that one. <laughs> Even Wally Wright could have seen that one. Who? Wally Wright, the blind fellow at Canberra. As Robert Walls, right in the centre of the ground. It's a shocking kick by Walls, dropping short. Walsh couldn't quite get to the ball. Cotaggio comes across, but it's Kane who got there first. Over the top was McGee. Gets a hand pass to Walsh, who knocks it onto Bartlett with good thinking. Quick play, puts it to Bartlett, and he drives it wide to the half forward line, and his kick drops short. Carter running the wrong way, thought the ball was going to carry, and Byrne took a good, well-judged mark. Burns kick, that towards half forward. Robert Walls is there at the, in the middle. It's punched away from Green. The Stewart takes it a hand pass back. And Walls gets it a hand pass towards Crane. Crane dives, so does Burke. Crane gets a shove in the back, but it's called play on as umpire Robinson is allowing play to swiftly go on. He's not pulling up any minor infringements. 
Good umpiring so far by Robinson. An awkward looking bounce goes to Mackay. He puts it wide where Walls takes it. The kick smothered by Francis Burke who follows on quickly. Fumbles the ball at the vital stage though. Cotaggio comes across. I feel that Burke may be in trouble with his leg. On, on, at, oh at yes! Stage. Francis Burke there. Obviously in trouble. The kick downfield. Green must get the free kick. As Bobby, I sure, I'm sure I can speak on behalf of all football followers. I sincerely hope there is nothing really wrong with Francis Burke. But by the way, he's limping. He's in awful trouble. But here's Hart now with the ball. Slap bang in the centre of the MCG. Hart goes to take a run, but there's a 15-yard penalty. Hart's kick now. Travels out towards a pocket on the outer side. Racing for it there is Sheedy. Pennell's after him. Pennell breaks away with the ball. He's grabbed a bit high. He's getting the free kick. Oh, hello. It was Pennell's free kick. Now it's going the other way. Sheedy to take it. Could prove costly. No big pardons in this grand final. Kevin Chetty's on the half forward flank on the outer side of the ground. His kick, it's a nice one, in towards the pocket. Up they go, nobody able to mark, taken by Dill. Dill hooks it around. It's out towards that half back flank on the outer side once again. The ball trickles over the boundary line. There'll be a throw in midway between the half forward flank and the wing position on that outer side. That is Richmond's half forward flank. Green now going in. Kevin Hall comes under the ball. Up goes Mackay. Green gets a tap away, however. Cotaggio comes in there. He's close to the boundary line, but manoeuvres around Bartlett. Cotaggio settles down. Ooh, got it a bit high, but in towards the centre it goes once again. And Crane takes a fantastic mark. Gary Crane of Carlton. Courage personified with this lad. He kicks towards centre half forward. Walsh is in there. Up they all go. Hunt's there. Nichols comes in. Picked up by Clay. Clay of Richmond comes towards the members' flank now. Stewart is sweating on the ball. It bounces nicely for him too. And the triple Brownlow medalist gets it towards the half forward flank. Over the line it goes. There'll be a throw in the half forward flank to Richmond on the member stand side. Bobby, no room for the chicken hearted out there. And how, Mike, but there's no second prizes. There's no nothing after this one. Free kick going against Jones there. I think Jones decided he was going to square up on that time and uh, he was caught. As Green plays on quickly, drives the ball towards centre half forward. Pack flying, almost a great attempt to mark it. Swings back towards goal. Hart was there, but his Hart was outnumbered by four Carlton players. They well shepherded. It was Duell who drove the ball out. Taken by uh, Dixon. He can't control the ball though, and it's forced over the line by Dixon and Wood. Throw in on the opposite side of the ground this time to the previous throw in. The ball moving particularly fast. From the throw in, we see Mackay and Green. A lovely knock from Green taken by Carter. Carter drives the ball down to the pocket. There's nobody home though as Southby comes through. Foot carries the ball over the line and another throw in results. This time in the forward pocket for Richmond. Richmond in the first term going to the scoreboard end of the MCG. Jones at the back of Roberts. Jones got the knock. It's taken by Walsh. Walsh tried to get a hand pass out. Too long, said umpire Robinson. A bit unfortunate for Walsh on that occasion because he did make some attempts to get the ball out. And, uh, well, umpire Robinson, I think, decided to clear the ball with the free kick. Bob, do you feel that uh, Richmond have settled down quicker than Carlton? Since uh, Carlton got that initial knock, uh, that initial goal, Mike, I do believe so. Most of the play since then has been in the Richmond forward zone. 15 metre penalty had been paid uh, against Carlton then and put Sproul well within scoring distance, only 30 metres out. Kick from Sproul. Oh. It's a shock. It's right offline. Hooked and threw for only one point. Well, a golden opportunity missed. Sproul normally a fairly accurate kick. Richmond 1 1, a one point advantage over Carlton, having that one straight goal from John Nichols. Well, they're in front. Southby to kick out from the scoreboard end. Oh, it's a magnificent kick. Deep to the half back flank on the outer side, but there's a great mark taken by Wood of Richmond. He's played well right through the final series and a 15 metre penalty against Carlton. They're giving away quite a bit. Wood takes his kick now to the edge of the goal square. The big men set themselves bombs up there, but it's Southby coming out with it. He runs into trouble, picked up by Bartlett. They're all on top of him and there'll be a bounce. Bartlett appealing for the free kick, but I don't think it was one, Kevin. Do you, Bob? 
there were quite a number uh, there, Michael. I think he's not picking up the small ones, the minor ones. The bounce. Jones tried to hook it in. Jones goes to the ground. Here's a chance for Stephen Ray. Pushes the ball in front of him. And in comes Walsh. Walsh and Stephen Ray doing battle there. A chance for Carter. He pushes the ball around towards Sheedy. Sheedy's down and getting a free. He's getting them the hard way, but he's getting them. He's already kicked one goal. Kevin Sheedy from the pocket on the member stand side. on its way, it's swinging around, looks pretty good. He's put it through. A great pressure goal by Sheedy. Sheedy's second goal, having kicked both of uh, Richmond's goal. They go to two goals, one, and a real pressure effort, a morale lifting effort, that one. We're 14 minutes into the first quarter. Carlton not starting off as brilliantly as they did in the 1972 Grand Final, but there's a long way to go yet. We'd like to bid welcome to our friends through Canberra, our friends down in Tassie, our friends in Adelaide, and of course in Perth through Channel 7 over there. <laughs> but a real big audience to this one, Bob. A magnificent crowd here as well, Mike. From the knock, Wood fumbled it, gets a kick off the ground, it goes across towards Sheedy, he fumbled it but had plenty of time to turn around and steady up and drive the ball forward. Royce Hart fumbled it as well, play is pretty tense at the moment as Byrne comes out from the back line, drives it forward, McGee's there and a good oh, mark taken by Robert McGee. A real strong defensive mark. McGee's kick, not a good looking kick but it might be effective as Carter's here, he misses the mark. Mackay bursts through, now goes forward. Walls coming across, but he left the ball for Kevin Hall. Hall obviously calling, and Robert Walls let it come through to his the teammate. Kevin Hall, long kick from Hall down towards the pocket. Davis is there, and a great mark by Davis. A great attempt to mark, it was an awkward one. Although, you might say it was only a chess mark, a really awkward mark, and a diving attempt by young Davis. Davis right in the forward pocket, in the boundary line. The kick from Davis, it's across the face of goal. Jezelinko's there, knocks the ball forward, but the free kick's being paid against Jezelinko and going to Mike Green. Green of Richmond. Green taking quite a amount of time to see where he's going. Now goes almost straight up the ground. Mackay from behind, couldn't take the mark. Bruce Dool's there, takes, has plenty of time, gets a hand pass through towards Crane. Crane walks around, loses possession of the ball, but recovers quickly. Now drives it across the ground. The pack Clay comes out, it goes straight past Clay's hand. Mike Green leads in the race for the ball. Green under pressure, gets it back. Nichols coming through. Nichols appealing for the free kick when he could have gone after the ball, but the pack now forming as McGee comes out. Off the side of the boot, out of bounds on the full, and Davis. Gives the ball across to Nichols, who will have a, no young Davis from a similar position, only five metres closer to goal this time, as where he had the last shot at goal. John Nichols having a word to young Davis. Davis right on the boundary line. A kick this time, a bit closer, but still across the face of goal and out of bounds on the foot. Kick to be taken by Francis Burke. Good to see Burke moving as freely as he is at the moment after looking quite gingerly earlier. Kick from Burke, drops short, Stewart comes in and takes the easiest of chess marks. Stewart down from the centre, he's on the half-back line at the moment. He kicks it towards the centre wing position. Jones is in the front position, couldn't hold the mark. It comes through past Bartlett, goes to Gary Crane. Left foot kick from Crane goes down, Roberts couldn't quite get to the ball. Fowler comes up across, Jezelink goes there too. Jezelink forced the ball past the Richmond players but couldn't get there before the ball could beat him over the line and another throw-in will result. Coming up to 17 and a half minutes into the first quarter of the 1973 Grand Final, a scoreboard reading, Richmond 2-1, the Carlton one goal straight, the throw-in, a chance here for uh, Sproul to come through with the ball. Sproul of Richmond, that's a high one, over centre-half forward, the players set themselves, the ball knocked right into their territory, here's a go, Carter's in there, Burns after Carter, but it's over the boundary line, I think, now it's called play on. No score, was over the boundary line, Bob. The goal umpire was signalling to the uh, boundary umpire, Mike, that it had gone over the line. Well, we could see it. Got a clear shot of it. Play having come down the ground uh, 
so fast the boundary umpire had no chance of possibly being anywhere near the actual uh, incident and it was the goal umpire who signalled to the boundary umpire that the ball had gone out of bounds. Hello, and some clown up in the uh, crowd has got the ball. Why they come to the football is beyond me. There must be somebody up in that crowd with the football. Goodness gracious. This and happened in the reserves game, Mark. I think they lost three balls in the reserves well, game. I just hope that somebody turns around and puts them in. Wait for the throw in now. In that forward pocket for Richmond on the outer side. Jones going in there. Green goes up with him and Green gets a tap away too. Taken by Hart. Hart hooks it around with his left foot and one behind. Richmond now go to 2-2. Carlton one goal straight. Richmond playing the better, Bobby. It's becoming more obvious as the minutes trickle by. They're continually in attack, Mike. And uh, I'm sure viewers interstate, Mike, would be interested to know that Richmond have already won two premierships today with the thirds and the reserves. As we see Southby, a glorious kick from Southby. Roberts made no attempt to punch. His long punch was almost worth a kick. Sheedy puts a handball back. Hart falls at the vital stage and gets it back towards Sheedy, but it missed Sheedy, and it's taken by Dool. Dool goes around looking for Jezzelenko. Jezzelenko walls it is, I should say. Puts it down now to where Jezzelenko now in the play. Takes the ball, drives it forward. He's still going across the wall, centre half forward. Coming across was Walsh, intercepting it. Jezzelenko in the Knocks it forward to Hall. A beautiful piece of play by Jezzelenko. Hall's kick in, down towards the square. Nichols is up, so too was Davis. It's close to the line. Tried to be kicked through by Walsh, but it was carried across by Rex Hunt and through for one point to Carlton. Bobby, Richmond have actually won three premierships today. Their fourth one as well. I'm sorry, Mike. <laughs> Richmond now, 2-2, 14, Carlton, 1-1-7. Waiting for Dick Clay to kick out from the outer end. Oh, it's a magnificent kick, almost to the wink position on the outer side. The big men fly. It's Stewart with it. He can't break clear of O'Connell, however. And it's holding the ball against Ian Stewart. Although he made a great attempt to get rid of it. O'Connell down forward. Up goes Walls. Couldn't get away with it. Taken by Kane of Richmond. Kane to the wink position. Plenty of Carlton players there. It's Jones moving into position. Jones is still going. Jones tries a short one, and this will come off. Waiting there is Jack O'Connell. This could be a 15-metre penalty. No, a bit lucky. O'Connell racing in towards the centre. Puts the ball down towards centre-half forward for the Blues. The big man fly. No mark. A chance here for Richmond to get out of trouble once again as the ball goes to the wing position now on the member stand side. Players overrunning it. It's Crosswell with it. Crosswell. Oh, he's nabbed. No, it's called play on. Crane gets the ball across here. And there's a blue one down there. Look at this. There's another one. Oh, this is the first quarter of a grand final. I think Walls is down, Mike. That was Jezzelenko. Jezzelenko. Oh, this is a tough one. The ball to be bouncing. Look at the players around that. Oh, goodness me. Big Nick takes it and a big knock away by Nichols. Hunt comes in with the ball now. Hunt kicks it out to the wing position on the outer side of the ground. Taken by O'Connell. O'Connell trying to get away from Stewart. Couldn't do so. In comes Pinelli. Charges through. Pinell is still going. Sheedy tackles him. And they force the ball over the boundary line on Carlton's half-forward flank on the outer side. Just a link goes up. He's all right. The throw-in. There's Mackay and Roberts go for it. Cotaggio overruns the ball. Players going down everywhere. And who's coming out with it? It's a Richmond free going to Wood, is it? Yes. Wood of Richmond takes his kick to that weak position on the outer side. Hart there. Dill knocks the ball away over the boundary line. It was a big knock. And there'll be a throw in. Well, oh, Bobby, things are hot enough. It's a beautiful day in Melbourne. A very warm day. It's tough enough for the players out there without the punch-ups, isn't it? Well, you needn't say they're not desperate enough to try and win this game, Mike, as Sproul now bursts through the pack. A high kick from Sproul, really floating around. There's a pack of players there, though, with Royce Hart, and Hart had no chance of getting it. It came through to Jones. He balks around like a little man, puts the ball down a half forward, oh, but it's all Richmond. As Stewart puts up one hand, it runs down the arm. A magnificent player, Stewart. 
Stewart on the centre wing position at the moment drives it into the centre of the ground but it's all Carlton as Gary Crane's leading in the race for the ball an awkward bounce goes away from him a bit but he comes back the right way and now he's in clear country puts the ball into centre half forward Hall's in front but couldn't quite get up high enough to take the mark out comes Burke, Keselenko and bubbles him out of the way Matt Connell was held but it's called play on Davis through, a camp Kane gets a hand pass across but unfortunately umpire Robinson has, in, uh, has gone against Richmond here because Wood was streaming away with the ball and he's penalised Richmond by bringing the ball back to Kane. There's no doubt the free kick was to Kane, but he'd gotten the ball away to his teammate. As Kane puts the ball down the centre half forward. Coming across was Jones who punched it forward. Duell kicks the ball off the ground, it comes back into the centre. Sproul knocks the ball away from Mackay. Now has Kane to steady and drive the ball forward. It's a high kick. It's Mackay and Barn down there. Green in front, it's punched away. It comes towards Pennell and Carter. Pennell's close to the line. He was over the line though before he kicked the ball. And there'll be a throw in in the forward pocket for Richmond, about 10 metres around from the behind post. From the throw in, it's Green and Jones. Neither player could get a clear knock. Hart picks the ball up, comes through, and Hart's kick goes straight off the side of the boot, out of bounds on the court. Bobby, you can feel the pressure up where we are, and we're miles up in the air. We're 24 minutes into the first quarter. And what a hectic first quarter it's been of the 73 grand final. 24 minutes, Mike. Only three goals scored so far. 2-2 two, two, Richmond, 1-1 Carlton. Another ball lost in the crowd, it looks like. It's amazing how when one person does it, Mike, everybody else wants to do it. Oh, this is ridiculous. It really and truly is. Well, there's another ball being brought down. Peter Saltry, the boundary umpire. Now, what amazes me, somebody up there must know. They mustn't love football. It must be a big social occasion for them. Gee, they make it tough. Anyhow, there's the kick now. Coming out towards the half-back flank on the member stand side. A chance here for Sproul, once again, who's playing well. Sproul, a hand pass across to Kevin Sheedy. Sheedy steadies. That's his third. Sheedy, three in the first quarter. We're into time on, 25 and a half minutes gone. Gee, Sheedy's playing a great game, Bobby. Can't do any more than put three goals on the, on the board in one quarter, Mike, and as a ruck rover, Sheedy's done a marvellous job so far. Richmond, 3-2, uh, 20 to Carlton, 1-1-7, as you saw. And you're watching this through Channel 7 in Melbourne. Kevin Sheedy, a magnificent player, a great battler with a touch of class. Back in the centre, Robinson bounces the ball. The Whale runs backwards there. Ted Jesselenko picks the ball up, driving Carlton forward, but plenty of Richmond defenders there. Look at that. In comes Robert Walls, could get a free out of it. McGee comes through, yes. Walls is down. Robert Walls, who played so magnificently last year, but of course, this is 12 months after that. Walls would be some 35 metres out, thereabouts. Directly in front, he kicks and it's offline and through for one behind. Carlton very scratchy, Bob. Having a lot of trouble getting it past their half forward line, Mike. Richmond backmen putting a great amount of pressure on. Dick Clay. Goes to the outer side of the ground. Not a good looking kick, but it covered a great amount of distance. Stewart almost marked it. It comes down to Walsh, who drives the ball down towards the pocket, but his kicks right off line, out of bounds on the full. And it'll be Rex Hunt, the Richmond back pocket ruckman, or permanent back pocket, playing on Nichols. 15 metre penalty being paid against John Nichols for going over the mark. Hunt now drives the ball to the centre wing position. Coming across was. Bob Jones up high, couldn't take the mark, it comes to the ground as Roberts picks it up, gets a hand pass forward, taken by Duell, who quickly drives the ball forward towards Jezelenko. Oh. Jezelenko was up high, but he'd infringed against Kane in doing so, and it's Kane who gets the free kick. Kane goes on quickly, oh. drives the ball further down the ground towards half forward, Pennell at the back, and Pennell at good mark. Philip Pennell. 
15 metre penalty being paid this time against Richmond. I'll say one thing for Ian Robinson, it's his first grand final. By heck, he's letting them know who's boss. No doubt about that, Mike. Cadell to take his kick from the centre. Kicks down into the forward zone. They fly high, but the Richmond defenders on top. Once again, it goes to Mackay. Mackay up cold and snaps in. He's put it through. Glorious goal by Mackay then. Quick thinking. Grabbed it out of the air. and It was amazing how far the, the kick actually went, Mike. 3-2 Richmond, 2-2 Carlton. Back to one kick between the sides. Well, Bob, I get the feeling. Richmond playing the better football, but Carlton within striking distance of them. Well, they've made far more use of their opportunities, Mike. Richmond have had most of the score, uh, most of the play in their forward zone in this the first term, but uh, Carlton are still only one kick behind. It's back in the centre now with umpire Robinson. The bounce sees Green and Jones. Jones bundled Green out of the way, grabs the ball and drives it forward where it's Walls and McGee. Both jostling for position. Dick Clay comes out using his pace. Could it be a free kick for Clay, I'd say? Yes, Dick Clay Ooh. with a free kick. Jesser was off. 29 minutes into the first quarter of the grand final. Another 15 metre penalty being paid, this time against Jesser because he didn't return the ball back to Dick Clay. Dick Clay now on the half-back flank on the outer side of the ground. Kicking up towards the scoreboard and there's his kick as usual. It's a beautiful kick to the half-forward flank. Here's a go. Oh, Wood almost had that one. Through comes Stewart. Stewart showing great form up towards the pocket on that outer side. Baum has the ball knocked away by Southby. Here's a go, though. Ray comes in. Couldn't get away with it. Vinnie Waite pushes it in front of him. Look at Sheedy going in there. Picked up by Waite once again. Waite eventually gets his kick and tops one. Up to the weak position on the member stand side. They stand and deliver. It's Crane with the ball. Crane now down towards a half forward flank on the stand side. Players race out to meet it. Mackay of Carlton with it. And he slides over the boundary line. Hotly pursued by Francis Burke, who's now moving quite freely after the fright that we all got early in the match. We, I honestly thought that leg had gone again, Bobby. It did look that way, Mike. Throw in takes place. They go, Green in front, Mackay from behind, down to the ground it comes, Cotogio's in there, may have given away a free kick. Going to Fowler. Fowler of Richmond, between the back pocket and half-back flank on the member stand side. His kick, it's a nice one, up to the wing position, Dool goes up there behind Hart, taken however by Sproul, Sproul to the half-forward flank, Pinnell gets a bounce of the ball in front of Sheedy, Pinnell tears away, kicks down towards centre half-forward, slightly out towards the flank on that outer side, but here's a relieving dash from Kane. Kane of Richmond up towards centre half forward. In fact, over centre half forward. Baum backing back, drop the mark. Southby's after him. Baum recovers. Across it goes here towards Carter. Carter back to Baum. Baum the left foot snap and one behind. Oh boy. Richmond now 3 3, 21, leading Carlton 2 2, 14. Siren should go for quarter time any moment. Southby to kick out from the scoreboard end. Let's see where he puts this one. He's going towards the outer flank. Oh, it's a magnificent kick. It's to the wing position. Up goes Michael Green and pulls down the mark. Green now quickly over towards Kane. Kane puffs out his cheeks, kicks a long one down into the forward zone. Here's a go. Up went Crosswell, couldn't come down with it. Taken by Stephen Ray of Richmond, hooks it around. Through four, one more behind. Taking the Tigers now to 3-4-22 to Carlton, 2-2-14. There's nothing in this. It's been a great first quarter, Mike. Oh, magnificent. Southby about to kick out again. Let's see if he can almost hit that wing position. Kicking the ball a mile, both full-backs. This one not as far as the previous one. The players shade their eyes from the sun. In comes Kevin Hall, couldn't get the run of it. Bartlett, but Richmond's in there. Bartlett pushing the ball in front of him, and it's against him. Jones is saying, come on, hurry up. David Dixon of Carlton to take it. Dixon now gets it to the wing position. He's looking for Robert Walls and finds him. Walls is slap bang on the wing position on the outer side of the ground. He hooks it in towards the centre. Almost at right angles, he's looking for Mackay. Mackay gets it under a great deal of pressure too. Mackay plays on immediately, down into the forward zone for the Blues. Up they go, and it's Dick Clay taking a strong mark. 
play. Young Davis certainly knows what it's all about, playing against a player of the calibre of Dick Clay. To the wing position now. Ball comes down here towards Ray of Richmond. Ray kicks in towards centre half forward and Sheedy's there and takes a safe chest mark. Sheedy plays on straight across towards Sproul. Sproul steadies, kicks at the big ones. That's going to be close, it's swinging. One point. And the scoreboard now reads, Richmond are 3-5, 23 to Carlton, 2-2, 14. Boy, this has been a long quarter. Southwick kicks out again. This is another beautiful kick. Francis Burke goes up there with Mackay. The ball's knocked towards David Dixon of Carlton. Dixon has time to steady. His kick going to the half forward flank on that outer side. Jessalenko's there, but Stewart! Oh, fantastic. And yours, all right. Incredible. Stewart in towards the centre. Green's on his own. He'll take a safe mark. Plays on immediately over towards Bartlett. Bartlett breaking clear. Takes a long one into the forward zone. Up they go. Big Roberts is there. Baum still juggling the ball. Roberts has it. Roberts tries a short run across here. Players racing for the ball there. Oh, could be a free kick to Ray. But it's called play on. And here's a chance for Finn Wait to relieve the pressure. Wait kicks. The siren goes. Ending the first quarter of the 1973 Grand Final with the scoreboard reading, Richmond 3-5-23, Carlton 2-2-14. The 1973 Grand Final, second quarter, Carlton versus Richmond. We go into the second quarter with Richmond leading, 3-5-23 to Carlton, 2-2-14. Carlton into attack in the second quarter, they're kicking up to the scoreboard end, but here's a chance for the pressure to be relieved. Clay coming out, gets the ball to the weak position. Crane is after it there. Walsh is after Crane. Both close to the boundary line. <coughs> Walsh has it. Gets a hand pass across to Bartlett. As Bartlett takes the ball, streams down past the centre wing position, drives it towards the pocket, looking for Baum. Baum's up. Tries to knock the ball back. Southby comes through, close to the boundary line. He carries it over the boundary line and a throw in all result. Southby might have caught one there. Michael Green and uh, Peter Jones, Jones number 28. Jones from the behind, neither player got a clear knock. Sproul picks it up, drives it forward. There's nobody home for Richmond as Vin Waite was waiting down there all on his own. Waite puts the ball wide to the centre wing position where Crane comes down. It's actually on half back now. Crane's left foot kick goes straight into Walsh, off Walsh and out of bounds. And the throw in result this time on the half forward flank for the Tigers. Jones and Roberts of Richmond this time to compete for the knock. Jones in front, gets the ball down, but it's taken now by Stephen Ray. Ray's kicked down forward. Green coming across, it's punched away, but it's been paid by umpire Robinson. Umpire Robinson signalling that Mike Green will get the kick. He's only 25 metres out, directly in front. Green, been a good player so far for the Tigers. Making position around the field. The kick from Green. Full points. His first. The Tigers fourth. The they go to four goals, five. 23 points. Uh, 29 points, that is. Carlton, 2-2, two, two, 14. A 15-point margin between the sides. And Bobby, that came up one minute, 45 seconds into the second quarter. Carlton really needing a lift at the moment. I know it's only 15 points, but they're not really looking like a premiership side. And by Ian Robinson. An awkward bounce. Favours Brian Roberts. Roberts gets in. A backhanded knock goes into the centre. Sproul comes across. Bumbled the ball. Bartlett's over the top, but he's still going. Bartlett throws the ball out, recovers it again. Good play by the young little rover as Bartlett's kick goes blindly across the ground, though. And it's Gary Crane who comes down to take them up. Crane. Everything he does is he's loaded with courage. A 15 metre penalty being paid. Umpire Robinson letting all players know that if they go over the mark, it'll be 15 metres. Crane's kick. It's a good looking kick in towards half forward. Jezelenko coming across from behind, punches the ball away. It goes toward Walsh. Walsh recovers it, falls over the vital stage, gets a push in the back. Bartlett not particularly happy. And the free kick goes to Brian Walsh. Walsh is on the half-forward flank for Carlton at the moment. He puts the ball forward. Down towards the forward pocket. Walsh coming across. It's punched away by McGee and carried over the line. And another throw and all result. Throw in. Mackay and, and Roberts. 
Roberts uses his bulk to advantage. It comes through to Gisalenko. Gisalenko's kick almost goes straight across the ground. Coming out for Carlton was the young Davis. He recovers, comes back up, back after the ball, but would dive and desperately kept the ball there for the Tigers, preventing Davis from going away and having a shot at goal. Throwing in the forward pocket as Roberts was up high. Mackay burst through. Can't get there in time, though, before he's held. Slung off his feet. As he did, the ball came off the boot, out of bounds, on the full. And Sheedy's there waiting for the ball to come back so that he can put it into play. Looks like he might have a long wait. No, the ball's coming back because the police are down there now making sure that when the ball goes into the crowd, it comes right back again. Kevin Sheedy, back pocket. Playing as a, today as a ruck rover. Kick from Sheedy. Back towards half forward. It's punched away. Close to the boundary line. There's three Richmond players and Dixon, but none of them can really take the ball. And it carries over the line. Another throwing cup will eventuate. Players desperately trying to get the ball away as Mackay got to get to knock it's taken by Stewart who's playing a great game for the Tigers Hall was up makes a couple of attempts to mark but couldn't get there in time he received one too high and Hall will get the free kick on the half forward line for Carlton around about 60 metres out from goal what a great player he's been for the Blues especially in finals Kevin Hall let's see what he does with the ball kicking up to the scoreboard end Oh, it's going to be close. It's a beautiful kick. He may have hit the post. No, it's through. It's through a magnificent kick. And Carlton are back in there fighting. Carlton, three goals, two. Richmond, four goals, five. Nine points now between the sides. Coming up to the five and a half minute mark into the second quarter. It was a magnificent kick that, Mike. I didn't really think that Hall would get the distance. Neither did I, to be absolutely truthful. The umpire, Ian Robinson, doing a great job in his first grand final. Can't take anything away from this bloke. No, he's been right up with the play and hasn't pulled it up with the minor infringements. Free kick this time, going to uh, Kevin Hall, right in the centre of the ground for a Richmond player being in the diamond when he was ready to bounce the ball. From the he's not punched away from Nichols, but Nichols is going to get the free kick. Nichols with the free kick directly in front of goal. 25 metres out. He's kicked one. Great amount of pressure on the Carlton captain and coach. As if Nichols kicks this one, it'll be three points between the sides. A kick from Nichols. It's off line. One point only. Michael Williamson was so confident he'd already put, put it down. A real pressure kick, that one, and Nichols on that occasion putting it through for only one point and eight points the margin now between the sides. Well, that proves how much faith I've got in Big Nick, but I think that uh, knock that he took in early in the first quarter may have taken a little more out of him than we imagine. Oh, there's a kick from Dick Clay. It's gone one mile to the outer side. Jones goes up, couldn't pull it down, taken by Sheedy. Sheedy hooks it around. Oh, he's put it clean over the boundary line. Out on that weak position on the outer side of the ground. Gee, both fullbacks kicking off beautifully a delight to see Crane with the ball now Crane to the half forward flank still on that outer side up goes David McKay he'll be paid the mark now if he and Jones start uh, taking their grabs we'll see a different uh, Carlton the big men as yet not really marking cleanly McKay who kicked one in the first quarter Coming up now, some 60 metres out, puts it on its way. Oh, it's a beautiful kick. Oh, fantastic. Well, I didn't give him much hope of putting that through, Bobby, and the difference now will be two points. Richmond, 4-5, 29. Carlton, 4-3, 27. Mackay's kicked two great goals now, and both at stages when Carlton needed that lift. One in the first term, one just now. There's Mackay and Francis Burke. Burke... Looks to be favouring his leg a little bit still, Mike. But uh, with the courage that Francis Burke has, if anybody can carry an injury and come through, it's Francis Burke. From the bounce, Jones was up high, forcing it forward. Sproul comes through. So too does Dixon, but he couldn't take possession of the ball. Woods there. Francis Burke intercepts. He runs into the centre of the ground. A long kick from Burke up towards half forward. Coming across it, goes straight past the pack. Barn grabs the ball, a head pass on to Carter. And Carter puts it right through. Full points indicated by the goal umpire. 
and Richmond again got a eight point margin. Young Carter, young boy recruited from Tasmania. As I said in the first term, his second game, and he's kicked one as Richmond go to five goals, five, with Carlton on 4 3. Well, they answered that one pretty quickly, Mike. Yes, Bobby. I've got a feeling at the final siren there's not going to be much in this, if anything. I've got the feeling in my bones this is going to be as close to a draw as you'd ever want to see a football match. Bounce in the centre, Jones gets a tap away now, out towards the flank on the outer side. Through comes Robert Walls, he's grabbed and grabbed too high, now get a free. Oh! It's a 30 metre penalty now. A 30 metre penalty. He's not beyond kicking it either, Mike. Walls from a long way out, but it swings out towards a pocket. Help me a mark, Paige. David Dixon. If he gets a goal, it's been a gift from uh, two Richmond players. Then again, Carlton did a lot of this in the first term. Dixon, got a clear line to goal, although he's on an angle. He kicks, oh, it's right through. No worries. And at the 10-minute mark in the second quarter, the scoreboard reads, Richmond a 5-5-35, Carlton a 5-3-33. Two points of difference. We're in business now, Bob. This is a grand final. Mike, do you get the feeling that they uh, don't exactly love each other, these sides? Well, there's so much uh, pressure out there. They've got a ton of respect. Don't worry about that. They're after the flag. This is what football's all about. There's the Robert premiership flag. From it, Kevin Hall tries to get out with it. It's taken by Stewart. Stewart's kick smothered. It goes back to Hall. There's a pack of players forming. Nobody can really get the ball out. And umpire Robinson has no option at all but to bounce it once again. Again, Robinson bounces it. It's Jones who hooks the ball back over the back. It's taken by Wood. He does a beautiful blind turn. Now puts the ball straight down the ground. Croswell coming across and judges the ball magnificently. Brent Croswell. Croswell playing on the half-back flank at the moment. Having his kick from centre-half back. It's a long kick down a centre-half forward. Mackay was up high. Couldn't hold the ball. It comes through to Wood. Wood breaks across the half-back line. Swinging it into the centre of the ground. It goes past Jones. Jones gets Carter too high. And Carter it is who comes up with the free kick. Well, right in the centre of the ground. Carter's long kick goes down past the half forward line. Weight was up high. Punched it down. It's taken by Hart. Hart a long hand pass towards Sheedy. Sheedy takes it. His kick goes into the square. Goes the square in there and hits the post. Well... See what a trier he is. Luck just didn't favour Richard oh. on that occasion. Well, the Shady ball deserved better luck than that. Could have bounced either way and then decided to bounce straight into the goal post. Three points between the sides. 5-6 Richmond, 5-3 Carlton. As Southby with a magnificent oh. kick right back to the right into the centre almost. Coming across is Stewart and Hall. Stewart takes the ball. Steady's play up for the moment. A long kick by Stewart down towards the pocket. Where it's Southby and Barnes. Pushed away by Wade and Southby. And Southby oh, held high. And this one too high. Southby's a little seedy too. He's very seedy. I'd say Southby does not know where he is at the moment. Oh well. There'll be some bruised bodies around by the time the final siren goes. Southby a great player, he'll come back. Coming up now to take his kick. Oh, he's very shaky. Kicks it out towards a half-back flank, up they go. Out comes Bartler with the ball, he's dumped. It's kicked in towards centre half forward for the Tigers, but Crosswell takes the mark and found Gray. I think he was kidding then for a penalty, but umpire Robinson didn't fall for it. Oh, beautiful kick now from Crosswell, up towards centre half forward. Out comes Robert Walls with the mark, he'll be paid it. Southby still in the hands of the trainers, as Walls kicks the ball down forward. Out comes Davis, but... 
is getting the free kick against Clay. Davis, cousin of Brent Crosswells, is maybe a good 60 metres out. There's Southby looking very groggy. As Davis comes up now, kicking to the scoreboard end. It's on its way, but oh, it's offline. It's out of bounds on the full. Dick Clay to take the resultant kick. Ah, it's going to be Francis Burke. Empire Robinson uh, just told them whose kick it was. It was worth the try, I suppose. Burke now takes his kick. It's a nice one, too. Up they go. The ball knocked away here, taken by Walsh. Walsh kicks it out towards the goal square. They're coming through there as Rex Hunt. Gattaggio comes in. Gattaggio with the ball, gets it across here. And there's Calvin going forward through the boot of Gary Crane into the goal square. An awkward bounce, and Clay runs through. One behind will be signal. 5 6 36 plays 5 4 34. Two points in the difference. And we are coming up to the 15 minute mark in the second quarter. Bob. As Clay puts the ball out towards the half back flank. Richmond players in the front couldn't hold the ball. Southland. Coswell tried to burst through the pack. But it's Bowell who comes away with it. Drives the ball down to the forward line. Boone comes across. Carter outmaneuvers him. Drives the ball now towards the goal. It's right down to the square, but it's offline. And only one. No, it's even not even a point. It's out of bounds. And the throw in this time will be five metres from the behind post in Richmond's forward pocket. Two points between the sides as Roberts is up in front, gets it down, it's taken by Baum, his kick smothered. Coming up. Oh! He's gone. Well, you saw it. You don't need any comment from us. Wait to take it. White's kick now. Comes out towards a half-back flank. Up they go. Hart was in that lot. Couldn't get away with the ball, but it's taken by the irrepressible Francis Burke. Burke back into the forward line. Baum goes up there. Couldn't hold the mark. But he handballs across here towards Sheedy. Sheedy's grabbed. He's ducking and weaving. He kicks. Great effort, but only one behind. Richmond now, 5-7-37. Carlton, 5-4-34. Gee, it's a grueling grand final, Bob, isn't it? And how, Mark? Southby, although taking the kick off, I still, still a bit groggy, I feel. His kick up the centre of the ground. Must be Sproul's free kick, as Mackay just pushed him straight in the middle of the back. Paul Sproul. Sproul's kick right out of the forward pocket. Green coming across, but couldn't take the mark. Wade punched the ball out, and there'll be a throw in about 15 metres around from the behind post. Green coming back to take the knock. Jones is there. They jostle for positions. Jones gets the ball down. Croswell tries to burst through the pack. Can't do so. Jones' kick is smothered by Hart, and Hart will get the free kick. Hart receiving a push in the back then. Royce Hart, only 25 metres out, a 45 degree angle. Has yet to kick a goal, but in a perfect position to bring up his first. Royce Hart. The kick from Hart. Full points, a real captain's goal as he takes uh, Richmond to nine points up now as they go to six goals, seven, Carlton five goals, four. Umpire Ian Robinson in full control, although the game has been quite rough and tough. It's been no fault of umpire Robinson's. Let's see what happens now. We are 18 minutes into the second quarter. Robinson moving in to bounce the ball. Jones in the ruck. Looks like the whale coming across. Big Roberts. Roberts gets a tap away too. There's a battle going on. It's Dixon coming out with the ball. Tackle there by Bartlett. But gets it up towards centre half forward. Jesselenko goes up. The ball's knocked away from him. Fowler coming through there. Fowler still going. Francis Burke's in there doing battle. There'll be a baller. 
The ball up between the centre and centre-half forward positions for the Blues. They're kicking up to the scoreboard end. There's a bounce. Roberts coming in once again. The ball knocked forward there by Sproul, however. Wide. But here's a go for the Blues. A hand pass over here towards Walsh. Walsh tries a short one down forward. And a very gutsy mark taken by Robert Walls. Boy, did that take some courage. And he is about 30 metres out on an angle. Kick one behind so far. It's on its way. Oh, he's hooked it. And through for one behind. So the scoreboard now at the MCG in the second quarter of the 1973 grand final reads. Richmond 6-7-43. Carlton 5-5-35. Eight points of difference in favour of the Tigers. Waiting for Clay now to kick out. Another beautiful kick from Dick Clay. They're running backwards forward. And Jones has it hit him right on the chest. And he holds it after a bit of a juggle. Up towards centre half forward once again. Almost to mark the big nick. Taken there by Davis. Davis kicks in. That rolls through for one behind. It looked as though it was going straight through when he kicked it, Mike. Well, that's tit for tat. The one of Kevin Sheedy's before and now that one. So, it, it is quite apparent, Bob, if you want goals, you've got to kick them right through the centre here today. Seven points between the sides as Clay again goes to the outer side of the ground. And again, it's a good kick. Covering a great amount of distance. Roberts up in front. Takes it, punts it on to Walsh. Walsh swings around his opponent, now drives it right down to the half-forward line. It's Carter there with Byrne. Byrne punches it away, it's taken by Dool. Dool runs in towards centre-half back, into the centre of the ground, a beautiful pass. Hits McKay right on the chest. He wastes no time at all, goes straight down to the half-forward line. Jezzelenko from behind, couldn't get up off the ground. As Hall comes through, uses his pace, brings it around. Oh! Hall's second goal, and the difference is only one point as Carlton go to 6-6 with Richmond on 6-7. A great goal, that one, Mike. Oh, I'll tell you something. Kevin's been a mate of mine for donkey's years, and uh, I didn't think he could do that. Well, there's the doctor out to Jeff Southby. Looks like he's going to, he's going to take Southby off. Well, he wants to. From the bounce oh, back Southby's in the centre. Still there. We see Roberts get it out. It's taken by Wood. Wood runs across. He's kicked smothered though by O'Connell. It's O'Connell and Cattagio comes across. Cattagio a hand pass to O'Connell who quickly puts the ball down to the half forward line. It's Mackay and Walsh. It comes through the back of the pack though. But we find the Fowler has been infringed against and will get the free kick. Larry Fowler, Richmond's back pocket player. He drives it to the centre wing position where it's Gary Crane coming across. A great effort to mark by Quazzle who received the push in the back. And Quasel will get the kick on the centre wing position for Cup. Quasel's kick in towards centre half forward. Jezelek goes there. It's punched all over. Play has been held up. A 15 metre penalty being paid against Richmond. And the ball will be brought back. And Quasel has another kick. Well, there's a bit of drama going on behind play. The doctor's still there with the trainer, with Jeff Southby. I've got a feeling they want him to come off, but uh, Southby's not coming off. Back to football. As Croswell's kick, this time again towards centre half forward. Davis is in front, but it comes through to Mackay. Both Davis and Clay were jostled for positions. Mackay whipped in from behind to take the mark. He's kicked two goals, and two great goals they were. Mackay at the moment, 25 metres out directly in front. And the Blues, one point down. The kick's on its way. Oh, it's well offline and out on the full. So the Blues still one point down. Kick to be taken there by Rex Hunt. Hunt's kick now coming on the member stand flank. The players set themselves. Robert Walls is in that lot. Still went up a mile. Couldn't come out with it. Mackay just crashes his way up. But look who smothers the kick. Full of courage, Francis Burke. A great effort. He brushes Jessalenko aside. Burke is still going. A hand pass over here towards Stephen Ray. Stephen Ray over to Carter. Good football from the Tigers. Kick going down forward. Cutting across is Pennell. Oh, this is beautiful stuff. Pennell close to the boundary line with this kick. It's touched inside. And a great mark taken by Wood. What highlights you're watching through Channel 7. Kick now going down forward once again. 
and the mark is taken there by Byrne of Carlton. Well, Bobby, we're seeing some beautiful flashes of play. You couldn't ask for more, Mike, as Byrne goes for the short one. It bounces in no man's land. Walsh couldn't get to the ball. It comes back down with Stewart leads in the race for the ball. He's under pressure from O'Connell. O'Connell's there. So too is Croswell. Walsh comes out with the ball. Walsh balks one way, then the other. Now goes onto the left foot, swings it back towards Sheedy. It's patched away by Jones. Good defensive play. There's a pack forming as there's a hand pass comes out towards Pennell. Pennell runs towards the centre of the half-back flank position. It can't control the ball and it goes over the boundary line and another throw in the result. Ian Stewart copped a heavy knock that time in going for the mark and he's a little bit sore at the moment as we see Jones and Roberts jostled position. Roberts gets the ball down, Crane oh. comes through and it'll be Crane's free kick as he was held too high. Gary Crane playing a great game so far today. Crane drives the ball towards the half forward line where we see Walls outmanoeuvre McGee, great mark. And the ball goes on quickly, puts it towards Clay and, and Davis. It comes through to Hunt. Hunt forces the ball forward but couldn't control it. Nichols comes through, takes possession, a hand pass forward by Nichols. Nichols is still going, kicks the ball off the ground, but it's intercepted by Carter. Carter drives the ball wide to the half forward flank as Stephen Ray leads Croswell in the race for the ball. It's close to the boundary line as Ray's there with Croswell. Ray kicks the ball in play, he's held by Croswell, and Stephen Ray will get the free kick. Brent Croswell signalling that it wasn't quite right according to him. Ray with the kick. Long kick by Ray down towards the forward pocket. Barn was up, couldn't take the mark. It comes through towards Sheedy. Southbeck comes through, gets a punch forward. Almost back. Barn coming in. Getting into the goal square. And Bartlett's there. Kick off the ground by Bartlett. And get a free kick, Bartlett. Bartlett will have the free kick right in the goal square. by Robinson, indicating to the Carlton players just why the free kick was. I'm certain you saw for yourself. One point between the sides is Bartlett right in the goal square. The seven points in just a few seconds. There it is. Couldn't possibly miss that. Bartlett's first goal. Richmond vice-captain Kevin Bartlett his goal takes Richmond to 7-7 with Carlton 6-6. We're into time on in the second quarter, 26 minutes gone. Kevin Bartlett, oh, what a great player he is. Magnificent player. Richmond have uh, shifted Stewart out of the centre, Mike, to a half-forward flank, not because he hasn't been playing well, but because of that knock he received in going for a mark just a few moments ago, and I'm sure it's just until Stewart recovers. Back in the centre, Ian Robinson bounces the ball. Players move in and up they go. Green is there, gets a tap away. Sproul runs into Crosswell. It's a chance for Sheedy to drive the Tigers forward. A nice hand pass over here towards Walsh. The Tigers playing good football now as the ball goes down towards Baum and Southby. But Hart cutting across, getting away from Duel, takes the mark. Is he a champion or is he a champion? Royce Hart has kicked one. Goes a heck of a long way out now. Umpire Robinson bringing Hart around. He's the type of fellow who could kick this. He's almost against the boundary line. Some 55 metres out and... What's he done? What did I tell you? He's put it right through his second and that was a beautiful goal, Bobby. You've heard about captain's goals, Mike. Well, that was one to take Richmond to a 13-point lead as they go to eight goals seven with Carlton on six goals six. Well, I feel at the moment, Mike, that Carlton are going to have to make a few positional changes at half-time as they're not really, uh, although they're still only 13 points down, it's been more the way they've gone about it. But I think they need a lift at the moment and you may find some different positional moves at half-time from the bounce. We see Jones get it forward. Walsh couldn't quite handle the ball. It's picked up by Green. Green's kick goes straight to Stephen Ray. He wastes no time in getting it forward. A hand pass across to Hart. Hart walks around an opponent now, drives the ball towards the big ones. But unfortunately, he's hooked it, and it's offline. Only one point result. One point to Hart makes the margin now 14 points as Richmond go to 8-8, eight, eight, Carlton 6-6. Six, six. Well, you've got 36 gladiators out there who know what it's all about.
as Southby kicks on. It's a beautiful kick deep to the halfback flank on the outer side. Green spoils Jones. Chance here for Carter. Couldn't quite pick the ball up, but it's Hart once again. Oh, look at that fella go, but his kick goes right into the arms of Philip Pennell. Thought there was going to be a clash on there for a stride as Pennell from the centre half back posse kicks back in towards the centre of the MCG. Over the centre, actually. Up goes Mackay from behind. Jesselenko breaks clear. Kane is after him. Jesselenko still going. He's over, as you can see. McGee tackles him. Hand passes to Robert Walls. Walls down on the forward zone, but here's Francis Burke again. Burke, a kick to the half back flank on the outer side, and McGee marks. Oh, heck, it's damn near impossible to get the ball past Francis Burke. Kick to the wing position. Up goes Hart. Pennell knocks it away. It rolls over the boundary line. There'll be a throw in on the wing position on the outer side. 29 and a half minutes into the second quarter. Green and Jones going for it. Green gets a tap away here. Goes to Pennell, however. Pennell can't break clear. Gets it across to Duell. Duell, uh, his kick actually goes further into Richmond's territory. He was under so much pressure. Stephen Ray gets it over to Hart. Hart can't break clear. Carlton fans singing out, holding the ball. Cross ball. A free kick going to Stephen Ray. Ray is on the half forward flank on the outer side. Oh, he's an enormous distance out. He couldn't possibly kick this. Ray's kick, though, going to the edge of the goal square. The big man fly. The ball bounces. But through comes Crosswell, relieving the pressure. Crosswell out towards a half back flank. Through they come, taken there by Dixon. Woods after Dixon. Dixon tries one towards Walsh. Walsh gets an awkward bounce of the ball and through comes Burke. Burke of Richmond, a long one, down forward once again. Almost to Mark to Baum. Baum screws it out. He's put it through. That's Baum's first. Baum's first goal takes Richmond to nine goals, eight. 20 points lead, almost to half-time, a good lead for the Tigers as they go into the half-time break. They've been trying to make it 26, I know, as uh, Carlton badly need a goal. Bobby, in this gruelling type of grand final, and that's what it is, that lead of 20 points is one heck of a big lead back in the centre. Jones gets a tap away this time. It's in Carlton's territory. Through comes McGee, however. McGee just can't... Uh, See where to kick it, so he steadies and kicks down towards centre half forward. Dill couldn't hold him up. Through comes Burn, it'll be Stewart's free. Stewart got a bit of a limp up. His left foot kick goes out towards the pocket on the outer side, and Burn takes the defensive mark. Burn of Carlton. Desperate stuff. Richmond winning in the battle of the Desperados at the moment, and Michael Green on his own takes the mark. Richmond keeping the pressure up. They know that once they relax pressure, Carlton will whip back with a couple of quick ones. Michael Green, nice kick. Oh, it's a beautiful kick, not a nice one. Here's a go for Roberts, and he's done it. The Wild. Richmond doing everything right at this stage. And they're keeping the pressure right on, putting it on and keeping the foot down. Roberts is... On an angle, you can see not all that far from the boundary line. Oh, he went to pass it, I think. And now he's going to have a shot. He's only about 20 metres out. A straight kick will do, and it was. There's another one. And as you said, Bobby, a 26-point lead at half-time would be a distinct advantage, and they've got it now. Well, it's virtually five goals, Mike. Ten goals, eight. Six goals, six. Five goals because it's that four goal, two margin. It's five kicks that Carlton need to be back in business. Richmond really applying the pressure and one of the players responsible, the, the morale booster that when Burke streamed away from the, oh. down the ground, took the ball away from Walsh and, and drives it down, particularly when the players know that he's playing under a cloud, that he's got to use all his courage just to be out there. And when he does things like that, how it lifts the side. He's not keen at all either, is he? Bouncing the ball in the centre. Up they go. Jones got his hand to it. Through came Crosswell. Couldn't get the run of it. There's Percy Jones still in there battling for the ball. Taken by Crosswell. Crosswell, a quick hand pass to Crane. 
Crane a high one over the centre. Up goes Mackay. Burt was in there. A chance here for Jesselenko. Jesselenko punches it into a handy position for David Dixon. Dixon's kick it through. That's his second. And don't sell Carlton out yet. They're still in there. Dixon, two goals in this term. 7-6 now, Carlton. Trailing Richmond, 10 goals, 8. Well, Jess have put it in beautiful position for him. Another long quarter. As we wait for the ball to be returned. Siren about to go for half-time at any given moment. Umpire Ian Robinson. The bounce. It's an awkward one too, so up they go. O'Connell of Carlton tries to get the knock away. Walls gets a hurried kick in there. Mackay and Burke doing battle once more. Taken there by Bartlett. Bartlett, oh, beautiful footwork. Gets one high down towards centre half forward. Players fly. And it's Stephen Ray putting the ball further into attack. Up goes Roberts once again and he's marked. Roberts has kicked one. He would be oh, a good 60 metres out. Taking his time about it. This will have to be a great kick. He's certainly going for it. The Whale puts his boot in with kicks into the man on the mark. Then wait, it's called play on. Taken by Green. Green of Richmond now, down to the edge of the goal square. A mighty pack flies. Nobody comes out with the ball. And a free kick has been plucked out of this. It's going. Stewart. Richmond's way. Siren goes. Stewart will take his kick. Stewart has not put one through there. Oh, well, that was a mighty pack. And obviously, umpire Ian Robertson thought that Stewart had been held too high. Now, Stewart is 25 metres out, directly in front. A triple Brandlow medalist runs in, it's on its way, and... It's a goal after the siren for the Tigers. And at half-time in the 1973 Grand Final, the scoreboard at the MCG reads, Richmond 11-8. 74 to Carlton, 7-6, 48. Grand final, 1973, Carlton versus Richmond. We go into the third quarter with Richmond 26 points up. The scoreboard reading, Richmond 11-8, 74, Carlton 7-6, 48. And we find Richmond going into attack. And for Carlton, Southby, who copped one in the second quarter, is off and Chandler is on. Bobby Skilton will give you the positional changes in just a few moments. Looks... Me. Free kick going Richmond's way. It's going to Bartlett. Bartlett is on the half forward flank on the outer side of the ground. Kicks into the forward zone. The big men fly. Hart comes out with the ball, but he can't go far. Oh, and look at them going in hard here. Waltz comes out with it. A hurried kick by Waltz. Sends it back towards centre half back. A hand pass is intercepted by Jesselenko. Jesselenko breaks around. Jesse now kicks down to the half forward flank on that outer side. Francis Burke is there. The ball knocked away from him. Crosswell comes in. It's Walsh taking the ball away in fine style for the Tigers. Walsh now down into the forward zone. It's a long one. Up they go. No mark to Michael Green. But look at this. Sheedy. And he's forced through for one behind unless he's getting a free kick. Free kick to Kevin Hall, Mike. Kevin Hall got one there that I was that busy watching Sheedy. Bobby, what are the positional changes? Hall has gone to full back, we know that. Jezelinko into the centre. Full back, uh, full forward now is Brent Croswell. Davis to a half forward flank, O'Connell to a half back flank. As we see Byrne put the ball down, but it's McGee standing firm at centre half back to take the easiest of marks. McGee. Straight down the centre of the ground. Jones at the back of the pack. But it's Roberts who was backing back. Almost took the mark. Chandler comes away with it. Goes on quickly. Down towards Davis. Davis takes it. Plays on. Goes into the centre to Jezelenko. He accepts the mark. Plays on quickly. Goes for the short one. It goes down towards Mackay. Nichols comes out. Thought about a hand pass. Now he does so. But it goes to nobody's land. No, nowhere. As Patagio comes in. It's... Pat Quine and it's Kay, Kay of Richmond comes out with the ball. 
Kane drives it to the centre wing. Stephen Ray's there. And Ray it is to take the mark. Ray now plays on. Volks around Pennell. Has a bounce. Now steadies up and a long kick towards the forward line. Wait coming down behind Green. Puts the ball forward. He carries on. Coming up across with Joyce Hart. A long hand pass from Hart. Goes past Green. But Green gets every four. Just a let go down. There's a let go. Force Green to force. Punch the handball. Across to, to Sheedy. Sheedy has time to steady. Go for the short one. It's punched away from Barn. Jones comes in. Tries to walk around. Does so. But his kick goes off the side of the boot. It's close. The out of bounds on the ball. Wayne Walsh coming across to take the kick. Walsh, normally a long kick, should put it right into the goal square. It's a lovely kick oh. from Walsh, right down to the teeth of goal. The pack up, coming out with Hart, who couldn't quite get to it. Roy's Hart on the ground, he'll get the free kick and has the opportunity of making it 32 points to difference. Hart has kicked two. A vital kick, this one. And listen to the Carlton fans, Bobby. Roy's Hart directly in front, only 12 metres out from goal. Kick from Hart, right through the centre, and that makes it 32 points between the sides. A, a big break to Richmond as Hart kicks his third goal. Three and a half minutes into the third quarter. Well, what can the Blues do about it? It's not an insurmountable lead, but, gee, I get the feeling, Bob, they're not playing well enough to uh, overcome it. But at this stage, there's somebody making a lot of noise near one of our microphones is going to drive us mad before long. Back in the centre, Ian Robinson in control there. The bounce. Jones coming in there. Roberts does battle with him. Jones taps it down to Walsh, but Walsh is immediately surrounded. The whale, Roberts picks it up, sends it down into the forward zone. No mark there to a Stewart who seems to be struggling a bit as O'Connell gets it to the half court, forward flank. And it's Richmond into attack now as Sproul puts his boot into it. It goes down into the pocket. Up they go, no mark to Baum. Stewart pushes the ball down. Baum gets it over to Stephen Ray. Ray to Stewart and Stewart puts it through. Stewart's second goal. Second. Stewart having kicked one after the siren at half time. That's his second goal. And a big break to the Tigers. 38 points between the sides as they go to 13 8 with Carlton on seven goals, six. Ian Stewart now playing on the half forward line. He received a very heavy knock in the second term. Sproul's gone and went into the centre. And Stewart. Went to the half forward line and he's six kicked out two goals. Back in the centre, we see Brian Roberts in a bit of trouble at the moment. It's his free kick. Paul Sproul saying, come on, get up and get on with it. Not wanting to waste any time at all. Now that they've got a run on. Roberts, in the centre of the ground. Shocking kick by Roberts. Robbing short, Sheedy comes across. Forced it towards Hart. He gets bundled out of the way. But previously, Sheedy had been paid the free kick. Comes back to Kevin Sheedy. He's on the half forward line at the moment. A good 60 metres out from goal. He's kicked three all in the first term. The kick from Sheedy. Down to the teeth of goal. Jones is up. Royce Hart in the front. It's taken away by Chandler. Chandler goes straight across the face of goal. Wood coming across, forces the ball forward. It's close to the boundary line. Wood tries to keep it in, but unfortunately uh, could not get the ball back into play and the throw in will result. Throw in in the forward pocket for the Tigers. The Tigers in this term doing all of the attacking as they try and go further ahead as we see Chandler over the top of the ball. He's carried bundled out of the way. Umpire Robinson coming down to signal that it's against Chandler for not making any attempt to get the ball out. And, uh, well, I suppose he's been consistent, but I can't quite agree with that one. Kevin Bartlett has kicked one in fine position to make it two. It's a shocking kick by Bartlett, straight across the face of goal and out of bounds on the foot. Carlton fans yelling their approval as they did not believe it should have been a free kick. Kick. 
Taken by Hall, goes out towards uh, Duel. Hall punts away, Duel plays on, runs around Balm. Duel a long kick towards the centre of wing position. And unfortunately it was too close to the boundary line and out of bounds before Jezelenko could get to it. Well take the throw in now on the wing position on the outer side of the ground. Carlton really struggling at this stage of the 1973 grand final. A tie goes up before acceptances and Big Roberts will get the result at three. They're playing like a rattled side, Mike. My word, they are. Hand pass across here to Francis Burke. Burke with that knee, uh, well bandaged up now. Takes his kick down the wood, centre half forward. The pack flies. Who comes out with the ball? There's been a free kick called here. And it's going Carlton's way. And listen to the irate Carlton fans. They apparently don't think that Robinson's given them a good go at all. From the reactions. Jones to take it. They can't take it away from uh, Richmond. They're winning the ball and winning it well. Jones now kicks in towards the centre. He's looking for Crane, but look at this. Ball snaps across there, picks the ball up. His kick is down towards the goal square. Here's a go. Up goes Michael Green. The ball knocked away from him. And Penel of Carlton relieving the pressure. Penel goes to the half-back flank on the outer side. There's only one man there, and that's Crane. Big Roberts uh, trying to stop him. And Crane, a little bit extra speed, got around the big whale. But the whale tried hard. Carlton now going forward. This hasn't happened too often lately. But it's Francis Burke once again getting the ball across. And uh, Fowler puts his boot into it. Sends it up to the half-forward flank. Taken by Pennell of Carlton. Pennell back towards centre-half forward for the Blues. Jessalenko goes up, comes out, puts one right down into the goal square. Big Nick is there, he's held on to. He smothers the ball. Hand passes across and Fowler pushes it through for one behind. Seven seven Carlton, thirteen eight Richmond. Carlton desperately needing a lift at the moment, but who's going to supply? Dick Clay going straight up the centre of the ground. Jezelinko at the back of the pack. A well judged mark by Jezelinko. A great effort. Jezelinko playing in the centre in this half. It's a long kick from Jezelinko down towards the goal square. Nichols coming across, couldn't hold the mark. He back, comes back again. Michael Green's here. Gets his kick out to Sheedy. Sheedy runs around Chandler. Now gets his foot to the ball and drives it to the centre wing position. Coming out Stephen Ray. Ray on the wood. And Wood drives the ball forward. Great play by Richmond. But down they go. It goes to Stewart. It's punched away by O'Connell. Barn comes through. Puts the ball onto the left foot. Hooks it back towards the pocket. It bounces and through over the line for another throw in. Ball quickly going from one end of the ground to the other. Richmond looking farther stronger at the present moment. Carlton have been forced to put Gary Crane down into a forward pocket as Crane's a, a little injured at the moment. Jones up high but couldn't quite get a clear knock. It comes through to Walsh of Carlton. Walsh blindly kicks the ball up the ground. Mike Green was there. It comes through to Francis Burke. Burke a hand pass to Wood. And Richmond again stream forward as Wood with a long kick down towards the square. Barm was up high. Gets it back towards Roberts. And Roberts puts it back through the centre. Big Roberts. Roberts, Roberts' the second goal, a point touched, I'm sorry, I, I didn't notice that that one was touched. So used to seeing goals, Bobby, coming from Richmond. 13-9 Richmond, 7-7 Carl. Kevin Hall at full back, remember he went there in the 1970 grand final against Collingwood. I'll tell you what, this is a different proposition against the Tigers. Walls could have been given a free kick there, but it uh, wasn't called. Jones gets it over to Dixon. Dixon tries a short one to the wing position. Coming through there is Chandler. He spills it, takes it over the line, and Carlton just not firing at this stage. And on the other hand, the Tigers doing everything right. Up goes Green. He gets a tap away there. Taken by Francis Burke. Oh, what a player this fella is. Burke up towards centre half forward for the Tigers. A ball knocked down towards Hart. Picked up by James. It can't break clear. Taken by Dool. And look at that. Three to one. That's the way the Tigers are playing. And through comes Sheedy once again. A long kick up into the forward zone. Bartlett's there. Knocked away by Byrne. Bartlett still after the ball. Dool's after him. And Bartlett has his kick smothered by Dool. But Bartlett butters up again. Oh, what play. Bartlett swings it in towards the centre half forward position. A bit of jostling. Wood just couldn't get there in time. Through comes Stephen Ray. Runs into trouble. And the free kick is going to Walsh of Carlton. 
Holds it Carlton now. Kicks it out towards a weak position on the member stand side. No mark there to Davis, but Davis recovers quickly. He steadies now. Kicks down for blocks. Oh, Richmond here. Look at that. Fowler made no mistake. Hugged it like a long lost brother. His kick goes to the weak position. Top of the mark taken by Sproul. Work on Cotagio off, Mike. And the kick now, going down into the forward zone for uh, Richmond. Oh. An awkward one, as uh, Bobby pointed out. Quirk is on, there's Quirk with the ball. His kick is a hurried one, taken by Duell. Duell over to Jones. Jones, a long hand pass over here towards O'Connell. Carlton looking a little bit better as O'Connell streams down the field. A short one towards Crosswell. Crosswell marks, here's a chance for the loose man. Crosswell, a little one over there towards uh, Dixon. Dixon uh, has the ball under control. There's Burke after him. Dixon kicks down into the goal square. Big Nick sets himself. The ball bounces across the face of goal. And it's hooked around for one behind. Well, Bob. Young uh, Davis just got his boot to that and was able to hook it around, but he, it was impossible for him to get it around any further. I'd reckon, Mike. But that's, uh, you know, if things run for you, there's a chance that it might go through. But things aren't running right for Carlton as Richmond put the, put the pressure on them right through. As Clay, a lovely kick from Clay. What Quirk punches it away from Wood, but Wood pushes the ball forward again. Crane comes out, a hand pass towards Pennell. Pennell's able to drive the ball forward towards the square. Nichols is down there, a great effort to mark by Chandler. Nichols tumbles the ball, it comes back to Croswell. Croswell hooks it over the shoulder, but it goes back across the face. There's Walsh and Fowler, a great mark by Fowler. A magnificent attempt. Not attempt, a magnificent mark. As Fowler goes for the short one, looking for McGee, finds McGee. Carlton with their 19th and 20th men on, there's a player down. McGee drives it forward. Stewart bundles his opponent out of the way. Now comes down. Dill comes through, gets a hand pass towards the boundary line. Bartlett tries to keep it in play, but unfortunately the ball had just bounced over before he could get there. Pennell's the player in trouble, Mike. Right. He's in pain too. Looks Bob like cramp, Bobby, does it? The throw in. It's over the top to Mackay. Mackay gets a foot to the, the ball. Comes through to Walls. Walls as hell, but it's called play on. Oh, we see what? Kane come out. Kane's over the top of the ball. And umpire Robinson decides to bounce. On the bounce, on the centre wing position, member's side of the ground. Mackay and Green. Green gets a knock over the back. Could have almost been a free kick as Gary Crane with great courage. Burst through the pack, now drives the ball down, looking for Nichols. It's Nichols, it comes over the back, Chandler's there. Chandler swings around, makes no mistake, puts it right through the centre. A badly needed goal. A badly needed goal for the Blues. Chandler's first, he came on at half-time to replace the injured Southby. It's Carlton go to eight goals, eight. Trailing Richmond, 13 goals, nine. And Bob, we're 15 and a half minutes into the third quarter and Pinella still there. 31 points between the sides. And we've got Carlton with 17 men on the field. Both 19th and 20th men on, as I said. And Pennell, cool, he's doing it hard, bouncing the centre. Up they go again. Tap down goes to Mackay, lost sight of it, but there's Jessalenko coming through, twisting and turning. Alexander the Great kicks down forward, but McGee takes the mark in defence for Richmond. What a find this bloke has been for the Tigers. McGee's kick. Oh, it's a nice one to the half forward flank on the member stand side. And the big whale goes up. He marks. Gets it over to Bartlett. They're keeping the pressure right on the Tigers. Down forward. The pack flies. No mark taken by Stewart. Stewart swings it out. Puts it through. That's his third. Stewart again showing what a magnificent player he is. Shifted out of the centre because of injury. He's kicked three goals from the half-forward flank. A magnificent player. 14-9 Richmond, 8-8 Carlton. As Richmond answer everything that the Carlton side can possibly throw at them. No matter what Carlton do, there's Pennell still in trouble. You can see the tightness in that uh, calf, Mike. Pennell with Laurie Fowler back in the centre with umpire Ian Robinson. 
The bounce goes towards Roberts. It's Roberts and Jones. Jones got the knock on it. Went towards Jeselinko. Mackay tried to break through. Bartlett comes out with the ball. Great play by Bartlett as he puts it down. And I don't agree with this one as, as Bartlett had fallen over and Mackay fell over the top of him. I didn't feel that Mackay really did anything on that occasion. But that's the way umpire Robinson sees it. And it's a free kick downfield for the Tigers. A big next running downfield. Well, it's obvious Carlton don't feel they're getting a decent go. From the kick now. Driven forward, it's punched away as a big pack go up. A hand pass across the wall, Sheedy. Sheedy oh, the back. Get to it. it should have been a free kick to Sheedy, but it's called play on. Oh, that Bird was comes away with it. Well, he's getting this one, but he should have been played the previous one. Don't you agree, Bobby? I did, Mike. Sheedy, a magnificent player today. He's put three on. He's on an angle. Now, this would have to be a, an extremely straight kick. Not much daylight between the two big ones for him. Up he comes, he kicks, goes right across the face of goals and out of bounds on the fall on the outer side. Oh, Richmond playing a great game. Crane to take it. Crane in the back pocket on the outer side of the ground. His kick goes out towards the half-back flank. Jones is there, but uh, it goes right through to Dixon. Dixon now down towards the half-forward flank. But again, we find Richmond in the way through the agency of Rex Hunt. Hunt's left footer travels into centre-half-forward. The big men set themselves. The pack flies. Nobody comes down with the ball. A chance for Chandler. He's surrounded, but cleverly gets his kick in. But waiting there is the ever-dangerous Kevin Bartlett. Bartlett a little wide of centre half forward for the Tigers. Kicking up to the scoreboard end. It's to the edge of the goal square. Jones goes up and it's Hart. Despite all opposition, Hart takes a very strong mark. He's kicked three. Umpire Robinson will bring him around. Well, you can see Umpire Robinson indicating. What a great performance they're putting up, Richmond. Hart, only 20 metres out. Kicks and, oh, what's he done with it? One behind. Gee, he really hooked that, Bobby, didn't he? Unusual for Hart, Mike, but I suppose, you know, when you've already kicked uh, three goals, as Hart has, he's kicked three, three now. When you've already kicked three goals, I don't suppose you can expect to kick them all. But rarely do you see Royce Hart miss those ones. 14-10 Richmond, 8-8 eight, eight, Carlton. As we await Kevin Hall to put the ball back into play. He favours the outer side of the ground. It's not a, a long kick from Hall. Dropping short. Ooh. Chandler was up high. Duell punches the ball forward, but it goes to Kevin Bartlett. Bartlett threw the ball out. It could have easily been against him, but he was able to retrieve it and go on after it. Puts it further down the ground. Kevin Hall has the ball punched away. Coming through with Sheedy. Sheedy was held too high. It could have been Sheedy's free kick. But cool play on as Wait breaks away. Puts the ball into the centre where Mackay's on his own. Mackay... Not quick to see a loose man further downfield. A shocking kick goes offline, and Francis Burke, diving, takes the mark. What a player this fellow is. Courage personified as Burke drives the ball forward. It's a long kick to half forward. Almost a great mark to Hart. It's been paid. He didn't quite think Hart held the ball long enough, but umpire Robinson has paid it. I think he paid it for effort, Mike. It was a great effort. As Hart goes for the short one, looking for Carter, and finds Carter. 15 metre penalty being paid. And this will put Carter within kicking distance. Well, they're 38 points up at the moment, the Tigers. Carter has kicked one. And Bobby, we're 21 and a half minutes into the third quarter. Carter, let's see what he does with this one. Kicking up to the scoreboard end. On its way, oh, it's off the side of his boot, but there's a mark. Will he pay it? No mark. The throw-in. 
in the forward pocket for Richmond on the member stand side. Tap down comes here. Walsh of Carlton gets it out towards a half back flank on the member stand side. A chance here for Mackay. Gets it hurriedly towards Chandler. Chandler into the forward zone, but oh, there are Richmond players everywhere. Hunt comes out and takes them up. Gee, that Richmond defence looks good today. The forward line's not operating badly either so far. Oh, just to prove the point, there's Hart taking a courageous mark as he hurt his leg. Well, I don't think it's 100%, but he's got three. On this occasion, he would be a good 55 to 60 metres out. But the Tigers, the tail's really wagging now. It's on its way, it's a beautiful kick, but I feel offline and out of bounds on the full. The heart spraying them either side of the big sticks. Didn't wait to take the kick. What can Carlton do about it? I'll keep plugging away, you can bet your life on that. Wait, asking for more room to kick out. Kevin Shetty querying it. And uh, there's a fellow who knows nothing about football, obviously. The cameraman, I mean. The kick now goes to the halfback flank on the outer side of the ground. There's a bounce, favours Michael Green. Green, a long hand pass back into the scoring zone for the Tigers. Through comes Carter. Carter of Richmond picks up. Well, Shepard are there, and the little pitch is still being handed out. The ball is in no man's land. Through comes O'Connell. O'Connell for Carlton now. In towards the centre. Up they go. McGee, a beautiful mark. McGee over towards Spell. Richmond doing everything right towards the end of this third quarter. Down forward once again. And Kevin Hall takes the safe defensive mark. Hall of Carlton. At the 24-minute mark into the third quarter. Hall in the back pocket at the moment. Playing full back. After replacing the injured Southby there, nobody can take the mark as Carter comes through, gets a hand pass forward, forcing the ball forward for the Blues is Quirk. Quirk swings around, drives it back in towards the centre of the ground. McGee comes out, couldn't punch the ball away from Walls. Walls thought about going, goes for the short one, finds Jezalenko. Jezalenko plays on the Spruce Man's creator as it goes to Pennell. Pennell has time to steady and line it up, and it's off the side of the boot. It's a real shocker. And out of bounds on the ball. Poor kick by Pennell. It shows just how Carlton are going. Could you see them putting on a burst, Bobby? Not really, Mike. I, I think they're struggling from a fitness point of view. And I think Richmond have their tails up and they're confident and they will not uh, relax the pressure. As we see Dixon put the ball back in towards centre-half forward. Walls comes across, courageously stood his ground and takes them up. Robert Walls... 50 metres out from goal, directly in front, yet to score a goal. Walls kick. It's a beautiful looking kick. Right Walls, points. Walls kicks his first. Robert Walls, Carlton vice captain, kicks his first to take Carlton to nine goals, eight with Richmond 14-10. Well, Robert's first goal came up 25 and a half minutes into the third quarter. Still a nice lead. 32, 32. points still. That's a good lead in the grand final against uh, two pretty evenly matched sides, as we know them to be. The umpire, Ian Robinson, kick going Carlton's way, obviously. A Richmond uh, player in the diamond. That goes wide to the flank. After it is Robert Walls, he's tackled there by McGee. A ball pushed towards Wood of Richmond. Wood in a bit of trouble, but I gets out of it beautifully. Wood's kick now goes to the half-forward flank. A chance here for Mark Laburn, but he spilled. No, I thought he'd spilled it. He tries a short one over here towards Crane. It comes off. Crane down into the forward zone. The big men try, but it beats them all. Waiting back there is Francis Burke. Burke out towards the half-back uh, flank on the member stand side and Kevin Sheedy is marked. Sheedy over towards Bartlett. Bartlett running loose there, coming through the wing position on the member stand side. In towards centre half forward. Up they go. Oh, what a good bar. He hasn't played it. You're joking. I'm serious. Oh, Bartlett. Well, Stephen Ray. 
He worked hard for that. Anyhow, Ray gets a tap down, but he couldn't get a kick in. Royce Hart is there, he's scragged, and will get the result in free. Hart, from the half-forward flank on the member stand side, kicks deep into the forward zone. Waite knocks the ball clear, in they come. It's Wayne Walsh with it, almost takes the umpire with him. Walsh kicks in, and he's put it through. Again, they answer whatever Carlton can do. Wolves kicks a goal, the next goal, it's Richmond again. No matter what Carlton throw up, Richmond have the capacity to answer it. Well, you've got to say this about Tommy Hafey. He's turned them out on the day so far in great style. And that's taken nothing away from Big Nick. We know, everybody knows, that uh, his players got the injuries at the, the wrong time. And, of course, without fellows like Armstrong and Keogh, they're depleted. But... The flag's a thing, and that's what Richmond are on their way to getting, the 73 flag. But we've still got time to go yet, and she's not all over as Davis of Carlton comes through. Davis down over centre half forward. Here's a go now for the Blues. Jones comes in. Jones gets his boot to the ball, but it's smothered. Jones has another kick there. He goes the wrong way, but he was forced to. His idea was right, but Pennell is hobbling, taken by Walsh. Walsh of Richmond now to the wing position on the outer side. Chandler racing after it. Oh, don't tell me. What can you do? I think he's entitled to swear. <laughs> oh, really and truly. How frustrated can you be? Throwing, Mackay goes up there. In comes Sheedy, Crosswell. The ball picked up by Crane. Crane now gets it over the centre position. McGee gives Walls a bit of a nudge out. In comes Walls and... Hello. Well, he missed one and caught the other. And a 15 metre penalty and Big Nick is real dirty on him, I can tell you that. Oh, look at Big Nick. Is he sir, giving him a nice serve? Oh, and the Richmond players are sitting back smoking the cherry at the moment as McGee takes his kick over centre half forward oh look at that up went hard but didn't come down with it Stephen Ray's in there out comes Mackay Mackay a hand pass intercepted by Roberts Roberts a hand pass over to Walsh they're cool calm and they're collecting Richmond as the ball goes into the forward zone and Balm marks Balm who's kicked one is some um, 55 metres away from the big sticks kicking up to the scoreboard end it's on its way, it's across the face of goals and through for one behind. Richmond now go on to 15-11, I would say. 15-11, 101 to Carlton, 9-8-62. Bobby Skilton. Vin White. Kevin Hall on fullback coming down to get the ball. White spinning out, to hoping to take a short one. But the, the Richmond players were after him as Hall starting on the outer side of the ground. Oh, Hall's kick. A good looking kick. It's all Carlton as we saw Dixon go up, spill the mark, but according to umpire Robinson, he held the ball long enough. Umpire Robinson coming down to signal a 15 metre penalty but I'm sure that Kevin Sheedy achieved just what he wanted to achieve then and that's whole play up for some considerable time. He knew time. what he was doing. It's David Dixon a long kick towards half forward. Big Roberts is there it comes through to Fowler he spills the mark coming up across was Chandler. Chandler can't quite control the ball now he does so uses his pace to get around McGee but then he fumbles it at the vital time he gets bundled out of the way coming in was Pennell. Pennell's kick goes along the ground Fowler comes across, carries the ball across the boundary line and the throw-in will eventuate. 15-11 Richmond, 9-8 Carlton. As Carlton desperately try to get one goal closer. From the knock, Walsh Ooh. comes through. Held too high, oh. but gets shoved out of it. Cool play on, <laughs> kicked off the ground by McGee. <laughs> No matter what Carlton do, it doesn't come off as we see David Dixon now with the ball. Dixon quickly drives the ball in towards half forward. Jones is there. And Jones takes the mark. 30 metres out from goal, direct, directly in front. Peter Jones. 
No more important kick today as Carlton badly knew. Jones's kick. Offline. Ooh, and only one point once again. But Jones, you see from the expression on Jones' face just how he feels about that miss. 9-9, 15-11. Dick Clay, who's kicking off today, has been absolutely magnificent. The kick from Clay, it's probably better than any of the others. It goes right to the centre wing. Punched on by Roberts, close to the boundary line. Duel can't get to it, and it's over the boundary line. It's on the centre of the ground. That's how far Dick Clay kicked the ball. It was up punched only about 10 yards, and that's where the throw-in is. There's the siren to win the third turn. The VFL Grand Final 1973, final quarter. Carlton versus Richmond. We go into the final quarter as umpire Ian Robinson bounces the ball. Richmond 38 points in front and going well. Into attack once again. Bartlett puts it right down into the teeth of goals. Hall comes out there on top of the ball. There'll be a ball up. Carlton with their 19th and 20th men on. They've lost Southby and Cotaggio has gone off. Well, Bobby Skilton, a tremendous performance from Richmond so far. Oh, absolutely magnificent, Mike, as Jones gets a knock. Carter's bundled out of the way, and Duell comes out with the ball. Duell's kick into the centre of the ground. Mackay was up high, it comes through where Wolves leads in the race for the ball. Wolves comes down the centre half forward. It's a long kick by Wool down to the square, and it's touched. Touched by Hunt, and through for only one point. And the ball quickly from one end of the ground to the other. Carlton may have been able to lift if Wolves had been able to kick that goal. They'll still be in there battling at the final siren, however, and who's to say they can't get up and win it But the way Richmond are playing? Full credit to them and their coach. By Joe, they're putting on a tremendous performance here. Well, Carlton depleted, though. Jones there, but it's Roberts who gets a tap down. It goes to Bartlett. Bartlett, who's been in everything today, swings around, sinks his boot into it, drives it to the wing position on that outer side. Hart is there. duel has got hold of Hart. Hart pushes the ball forward, however. In comes Duel. Duel picks up, and there's a bit of a punch on going there. The ball's on the half forward flank. Bartlett knocks the ball cleverly away there. Down to the ground it comes. Picked up and driven forward for the Blues into the scoring zone. Nichols goes up. The ball comes to Robert Walls. Walls swings it around. This is going to be a close one. Hit the post. Hit the post. Well, Bobby. I'm certain Walls are saying at the moment, Mike, just what do we have to do? They're trying desperately. Dick Clay about to kick out again. There's the scoreboard. Clay, another magnificent kick. The big men fly, nobody able to pull it down. Taken there by Quirk, who came on as 20th man. The ball down on to the ground. Crane comes out with it. Crane swings around, it's Carlton into attack once again. This is close, this is through. A great goal by Crane. Crane with Cotaggio off. Cotaggio had gone to the wing before he went off. Crane being forced to rove. Not a natural rover, but his great courage ensures that he still gets kicks no matter where he's playing. 30 points of difference, Bob. Could, could they get up? And listen to the crowd, jam-packed into the MCG. We hope our viewers throughout Australia are thoroughly enjoying this. There's something wrong with you if you're not. And a special cheerio to our friends over there in Perth through Channel 7. Bartlett puts Richmond into attack once again. Michael Green out there with weight. Michael Green has the run, over they go. Through comes the Stephen Ray, couldn't get a run at it, and Green is not going to be penalised for holding the ball. A good decision. The ball is on the half-forward flank for Richmond on the member stand side. They're kicking down to the Richmond or outer end, and of course Carlton up to the scoreboard end in this final quarter. And look at this, 36 gladiators out there struggling for this flag. And I think that's the best way to describe it, Bobby. It's a real hard, bruising, grueling game. You've summed it up, Mike, as uh, Jones gets a knock. It's taken by Croswell. Croswell goes for the short one, not a good kick. It's intercepted by Sproul. Sproul comes down, a hand pass from Sproul towards Bartlett, who's in everything since half-time. Bartlett with the free kick, right on the centre wing position. Bartlett, quiet in the first half, but a magnificent player since half-time. And Bartlett's fitness well, it's remarkable, the tireless way that Bartlett keeps going. Wait, almost missed the mark in the sun, but uh, his reflexes were such that he was able to get back after it. Takes the gamble, goes into the centre of the ground. 
but Wood lets the ball go, it comes through to Davis, Davis tries to get a hand pass forward, does so, comes through again, Davis puts a long kick over the half forward line, coming across was Walls, Walls has the ball punched away, it comes through to Roberts, Roberts has bundled out of the way, it gets back to Quirk, Quirk comes through, Quirk oh, too high, too high, it'll be the kick to Quirk, 70 metres out from goal, Ryan Quirk, normally a magnificent kick, should put it right down to the teeth, the kick from Quirk, it's right down to the goal square. Driving short, it's punched away by Burke. Taken by Robert Ball. Ball hits it back at four points. It's his second. Wall's second. Has Carlton got to 11 goals, 11. With Richmond on 15 goals, 11. Four goals between the sides. Can they come back? Five minutes into the final quarter of the 1973 Grand Final. Can they do it? Carlton lifting their game to the extent that in the last in this five minutes of this quarter they've played by far the best football of the game umpire robertson bouncing the ball plays well it's an awkward bounce two goes straight in the arms of pain he couldn't get a clear kick through comes sheedy sheedy to sproul sproul to stephen ray richmond going forward once again Barm goes up there kevin hall knocks the ball away here's danger hart comes in he was over the top of the ball and umpire robinson didn't fall for it And Waite comes out with the free. Ben Waite, oh, it's a nice kick into the centre of the MCG. Up goes Mackay, missed it by a mile, but he comes out with it, he's grabbed by Sheedy. And Mackay gets the free. Bad luck for Richmond then, because to all intents and purposes, Mackay had it. Carter off, Morris on, Mike. And the kick going now forward for the Blues. Tommy Hafey sensing danger. It looked all over at three-quarter time. But here's Francis Burke kicking wide to the weak position on the outer side. And Quirk has marked. Brian Quirk. A beautiful kick deep into the forward zone. Big Nick is there. Up they all go. No mark, however. Through comes Dick Clay. Dick Clay gets a push in the back. It's called play on. He hooks it around very cleverly. Keeps it in play. A chance for Bartlett. In comes Pennell. The ball is picked up there by Morris, who's just come on. Morris, Kevin Morris, what a great player to have sitting on the bench in a crisis like this. Kicks forward for Jack O'Connell. Marks. Barry Richardson, former champion. Gives the, the coat to young Carter, but it's Carlton going forward once again. Jesselenko knocks the ball clear, but here's Bartlett. Bartlett now playing the defender's role. Gets the ball to the weak position on that outer side. Bill knocks it away from Hart, over the line, and there'll be a throw-in. Well, Carlton haven't got anybody to throw on. Richmond have still got McKellar sitting on the bench. There's a throw-in. Mackay and uh, Green go for it. Mackay taps it down by Walsh. Walsh kicks. Goes right into the forward zone, a bit of magic went on, could be Fowler's free. Oh, Fowler was nudged right out, but it's Payne claimed the mark. What did you think, Bob? I paid the free kick to Fowler, Mike. Uh, definitely, the ball was further than five yards away anyway. Let's see now. Crane, some 45 metres out, sends it on its way in. Oh, it's a goal! Crane's second goal makes a difference. Three goals, three straight kicks. 18 points the difference. And a ton of time left. On the bounce, it's Jones and Green. Neither player can get it clear. It's taken by Chandler, who drives the ball wide. Walsh coming out, spills a mark. Coming through was Dixon. Dixon puts the ball down. It's taken by Mackay. Mackay, a head pass, goes astray. It comes back again. Mackay up, knocks it forward. Morris bursts through the pack. He comes through, takes possession, has a bounce. Now he'll steady the play up and drive it long towards centre half forward. Roberts coming out, waits up. Oh! by Wait. Wait up over the top of the pack. He takes a gamble, goes across the ground looking for, for Quirk. Quirk comes forward, knocks the ball away. It could have been a free kick to Quirk. He was held. Chandler comes through, puts the ball down. Robert Balls comes down and marks. Balls goes on quickly, down to the goal square, looking for Nichols, punched away by Nichols. It goes past Kane. Kane gets a hand pass towards Hunt. 
Hunt's being chased, kicks the ball off the ground, it goes to Wood of Richmond. Wood's under pressure, gets a kick, it's not a good one, but it's forward, going into Richmond's territory. The comes past Sheedy, taken by Jones, who drives the ball back again. Jezalinko marks, he plays on. That is play up with a long kick by Jezalinko, there's nobody home though. It's punched away from Clay, taken by Hunt, uh, McGreen I should say, and back to the centre where it's Bartlett. A great effort by Bartlett, magnificent play, as he drives the ball wide to the half-forward flank. Burns there, spills the mark, he and Sproul compete for the ball. Sproul gets a hand pass back to Stewart, and Stewart has a chance to steady it up. Drives it in a full forward, Wait coming across with Barn, knocks the ball away. It's forced forward as Kevin Hall comes out, forces it away, and can't get out of trouble. It's a sloppy kill though, and it's out of bounds on the full. Bad luck for Hall and Carlton as he brilliantly came away, but a poor kick saw it go out of bounds on the full kick to be taken by Stephen Ray. You could see the look of anguish on the face of Kevin Hall as that happened. Stephen Ray now. Short of the half forward flank, down towards the pocket. Too far out to kick it, I'd suggest, but he's kicked. Puts it within scoring range, and Big Jones comes across. He'll be paid the mark. Oh, and look at this. Jones on immediately. Gets it across here to White. White is almost tripped, but he gets a nice hand pass, but it's a long one. Over towards Chandler. Here's trouble. Two comes Bartlett. Oh, beautifully played, Bartlett. Beautifully played. And Bartlett steadies. Kicks down at the big ones. And Stewart is back. Stewart has kicked three. Eleven minutes into the final quarter. Ian Stewart. This will be a miracle goal if he can steer it through. Well, you can see where he's kicking it from. You know, as well as I, how much daylight there would be for him. He kicks. One behind. But that could be very valuable before the next uh, 20 minutes or so passes. Richmond now, 15-12, 102. Carlton, 12-11, 83. 19 points of difference in favour of Richmond at the 11 and a half minute mark. Waiting for Kevin Hall now to kick off. And the crowd going mad at the MCG as Hall hits the outer flank. Players set themselves. Michael Green knocks the ball clear. Bartlett's here again. He's the danger man. Tackled by Dool. Bartlett's kicked down into the forward zone. And Hall, oh, hello. Hall has been paid the mark. Let's see where he puts this one. Goes straight up the centre, more or less. Oh, there's a great mark taken by Michael Green. And a 15 metre penalty by the look of it. Why one and not the other? Does appear odd, doesn't it? Michael Green within kicking distance. He's kicked one. This is offline and through for one behind. Well, the Bobby is suggesting there was some inconsistency for me and Robinson. I am in that case, Mike. If it's good enough to give one 15 metre penalty, it's good enough to give the other. 13 minutes into the final quarter. Kevin Hall. Richmond desperately trying to steady their play as Hall with a long kick straight up the centre of the ground. Mackay up high from behind. It comes through to Crane. Crane swings around. A long kick by Crane. Out of the forward line. It's punched away by Fowler. Taken by Davis. He puts it over the top. And Cornell falling backwards. Was able to keep his eye on the ball and take the mark. Cornell 40 metres out from goal. A very acute angle. A vital kick. 20 points between the sides as Pennell has his kick. Pennell's kick swinging back. One point to make the margin 19 points. 19 points. 15 13 to 12 12. Clay decides again to go to the outer side of the ground. Clay's kick dropping short. Punched away by Jones. It comes almost at their feet. 
Jones tries to recover and force the ball through the pack, but unfortunately had no chance of getting it out, and umpire Robinson has no option but to bounce the ball. From the bounce, Jones and Roberts jostle for position. Mackay spill and it comes back to Jones. His kick goes straight up in the air over his head. Jezalinko comes across. He takes it and plays on. A long kick from Jezalinko towards the goal square. Hits the post. It's the second time Carlton have hit the post in the final quarter. Back to three goals. Three straight kicks between the sides. 18 points as Clay goes for the short one looking for Bartlett. Finds Bartlett. No, it's gone out before he got there. Out of bounds just before Bartlett reached it. Ryan Quirk to put the ball back. 15 minutes of the final quarter gone of the 1973 Grand Final. Quirk comes in now. Oh, it's a magnificent kick from Quirk to the top line. And he puts it over the boundary line on the full. Looks like Rex Hunt will take it. Hunter Bridgman right in that back pocket on the outer side. It's a nice kick from Hunt too to the half-back flank on the outer side. Man in front there is Michael Green. He should be paid the mark and will be paid. Richmond steadying down again. But Carlton still in there fighting it out every inch of the way. Kick from Green goes to the half forward flank on that outer side. Jones is in there, but Hart, the champ, comes across and takes the mark. He's got the cramp. No, he's all right now. Must have just got a little twinge. He's actually on the wing position on the outer side. You can see the wind ruffling his hair as he kicks down into the forward zone. Weight goes up, knocks the ball away from everybody. Taken there by Crosswell, couldn't get a clear kick. Wade is in there struggling, and umpire Robinson says, I'll bounce. Just a little wide of centre-half, forward towards the outer side. Look at the mob around that uh, ball there. Tap now goes to Mackay. Mackay kicks in towards the centre. The mark is taken there by Jesselenko. Jesselenko breaks clear, gets his kick into the half-forward flank on the member stand side. Here's a go. It's Francis Burke after the ball. Dixon comes through. Burke is held. Taken by Walsh, however. It's called play on. Walsh is going for a run. He gets his kick now to the half-forward flank on the member stand side. And a good mark taken there by Ray. Gets it over to Kevin Sheedy. Sheedy blasts away and puts it through for one behind. It'll take it back to 19 points the difference in favour of Richmond. And we are now at the 17-minute mark into the final quarter. Can Carlton rattle a couple more on? Or will Richmond hold on to take out the flag? Up they go. Kevin Morris appealing for the free and getting it. And a 15-yard penalty is automatic. Players, Carlton players, apparently feeling frustrated. And Kevin Morris now within kicking distance. He would be 55 metres out. The kick's on its way, it's swinging around, but not far enough, and one point will result. Well, Bob, do you think Richmond are going to hang on? I do, Mike, but there's no certainty of it. So that Carlton need four goals. Richmond have steadied. I think they've accepted the onslaught that Carlton put on and Carlton were magnificent in coming back. Not that I think that they've stopped, but I think Richmond have steadied and are applying enough pressure with players like Michael Green, who's just taken that mark. They've steadied and they're able to you know, hold Carlton at bay. Green, at centre-half forward, has taken a number of marks today. He's been a, a player who's been a big occasion player for the Tigers. He's kicked one. This one's dropping short into the goal square. Up high... Packing the, the players, kicked off the ground by White. Force forward, Woos Hart comes out. Hart's kick swings back to Woos. The goal's going to be close. Croswell's won on the line. And Croswell's taken the mark. The absolute last line. You couldn't get them any closer than that. And Croswell but, now goes straight up the centre. He's looking for Percy Jones. Jones doesn't let him down. A long hand pass by Jones. It's taken by Mackay. Mackay's going for a run. Now he takes his kick. It's a short one. Nobody able to take the mark. McGee comes in there for Richmond. The ball picked up by Hunt. His kick is smothered by Canelle. Canelle to Nichols. And the goal. One behind. 
thrills a minute. You're watching it on Channel 7. Where else would you get such excitement? Great stuff. Dick Clay kicking out from the scoreboard end. His kick not quite so far this time, but it's deep to the half-back flank. They must be getting weary out there. Taken by Kevin Morris, intercepted by Gu. Bill to Jesselenko. Jesselenko down to the edge of the goal square. Plenty of just Got the ball, but at the back, it's Dick Clay who takes the mark. Oh, one heck of an attempt from Robert Walls. But Clay, a fine player all day, held firm. Clay comes along the member stand flank now. Up goes Wayne Walsh, didn't hold the mark. Taken there by Sheedy. Sheedy very coolly hand passes to Walsh. They know what it's all about. Walsh a long kick now towards centre half forward. And Stewart has marked. Richmond placing the ball beautifully to position. Players with confidence in each other. The kick going wide, looking for Neil Baum, and magnificently placed by Ian Stewart. Baum, who's kicked one, is some um, 45 metres out, directly in front. And this one could mean the flag. It's on its way, the result. Oh, it's hit the post! Hit the post! Well, Bobby, I can't remember in the grand final, in the last quarter before, uh, the post being hit three times. Most unusual. Well, I certainly can't remember it, Mike. It might have uh, possibly happened, but... Uh, well, Carlton twice. Richmond once. 20 that... points are going between the sides as Kevin Hall puts it back and Carlton attempts to get down to the other end of his, the score once again. A great effort to mark by Hart. It has, he has marked. A magnificent attempt. And we're rounding the home turn now. Coming up to the... 21 and a half minute mark into the final quarter. Royce Hart with the ball. He's kicked three. Couldn't possibly even see it. A champion like Hart kicking this one. No, he's going for the short pass. Will it come off? Out comes Sproul. The ball knocked away by uh, Byrne, taken by Michael Green. Michael Green swings around. It's a funny old kick. Do has the opportunity. He's got plenty of opposition, though. Chandler's in there. Cheedy, as usual, right in the thick of things. It comes out towards Wood. He's grabbed. In comes Do, and the free kick is going Calvin's way. It'll go to Brian Quirk. Go to Brian Quirk. On the half-back flank. A little short of the half-back flank, down towards the back pocket. Quirk of Carlton. A hand pass, a short one over towards Jesselenko. Jesselenko runs into trouble, butters up, runs into Sheedy. Sheedy, a hand pass towards Hart. In comes Byrne, he's close to the boundary line. Sheedy's in this lot also. Look, they're dog-tired, those blokes. But it's Hart coming out with the ball. He kicks forward, up they go. <laughs> Baum will have another attempt. Stewart in a bit of trouble. Baum has kicked one goal, three so far in this grand final. Baum. It's on its way, the result. Cuts through, one behind. Well, Bob, they've come right back, Richmond, after that onslaught from uh, Carlton. They've come right back and they're going on with it at the business end. I think this is where their fitness is telling, Mike, as we see Sheedy all on his own. A number of Richmond players could have had the opportunity. Sheedy, a long kick from Sheedy, driving the ball right back up again and bam, there we go. Bam, directly in front. 15 metres out. Well, he's got to kick this one. He's kicked one four. 21 points between the sides as Baum lines the ball up. Baum being very deliberate. Neil Baum. Kick from Baum. That's his second. Richmond 16th. Barry Stanton, the Richmond runner, having a word to both Barn and Mike Green. 24 minutes of the final quarter gone, and there's the scoreboard. 
Richmond 16, 17, 113, Carlton 12, 14, 86. 27 points of difference, Bob, if my arithmetic is correct. And time running out, Mike. Coming up to the 24 and a half minute mark now. There's Tommy Hafey up there, he's on the phone, he's still giving orders. He's not letting uh, anything distract him from what's going on down there. Tommy's not saying this is our flag until that final siren goes because he knows the great capabilities of the Carlton players and he knows their tremendous fighting spirit. But here we find Richmond going into attack once again. Wayne Walsh with his tail up, kicks into the forward zone. Barn couldn't take the mark. Burn of Calvin comes through. Michael Green tries to stop him. Burn comes along the member stand flank. But look at that. It's Morris coming in there. Morris, the left footer, swings it around. That's across the face of Gold Stewart there. But it's taken by Burn of Carlton. Burn of Carlton now back in towards the centre. Here's a go, the two big men, Roberts and Jones. Jones recovers the quicker of the two. Gets the ball over to Quirk. Quirk of Carlton in towards centre half forward. Jesselenko's waiting there, but it's over his head. Francis Burke comes through, and Burke will get the free kick. Oh, Bob, the interest is still there. Everything is still in it. Well, you know, Mike, that you know, if ever a side can can get a lift, it's Carlton. As Burke goes into the centre wing position, Wood comes across. Craig Davis not being able to see the ball with the sun, and Wood intercepts the, to take the mark. Kick from Wood, wide to the half-forward line. Baum coming out up high. Hall punches the ball away. It comes back to Baum again. He tried to get it out. He's still there. He's held by a duel. It comes out to Byrne. Byrne breaks away for the moment. Goes short into the centre. An awkward bounce goes away from... Green and taken by Walsh. Walsh onto Morris, and Morris drives the ball down to the square. Stewart comes there, but it's Waite who comes across at the back. Waite plays on, goes wide to the wing, looks for Quirks. Quirks fills the mark, able to play on quickly. But can't get ahead, goes into the centre where Walsh is coming down. Walsh of Carlton, that is. Walsh is over the top of the ball, gets bundled out of the way. It's forced forward as Sproul picks the ball up. Sproul with a long kick towards the goal square. Green's waiting for it, it's over to the back. Stewart's there. Stewart tried to hook the ball back, but couldn't hook it far enough, and his kick goes through for one point. Into time on 26 and a half minutes of the final quarter of the grand final gone. Richmond 16 18, 114 to Carlton 12 14, 86. 28 points in front now, the Tigers. As Kevin Hall kicks out from the Richmond or outer end, he goes straight up the field. That's dropping short, and Sproul comes in and marks. And I don't think, to be honest, there was anything intentional in that. But full credit, Francis Burke still giving orders out there. He's as keen as Mustard. So too is Sheedy. They're as keen as when the first bounce was made. One point. One point to Richmond. 16, 19, 115 to Carlton, 12, 14, 86. Kevin Hall kicking out. He goes straight up the centre once again. Francis Burke knocks the ball clear, taken by Hart. Hart a hand pass over to Wood. Wood from the pocket steadies and he drives it. Through for another behind. Oh, Bobby, they haven't let up one bit, have they? They've kept this pressure right on. They accepted every onslaught that Carlton could possibly throw at them, and now Richmond have come back and are continually driving the ball forward. Jones takes it, a hand pass to Quirk. Quirk walks around, gets his kick in towards centre-half forward. It's over the top of the, the pack of players. Jezelenko, the one way, then the other. A hand pass across towards Walls. Walls overruns the ball. It's taken away from him by McGee. McGee's fumbling. Now he gets out of danger. Drives the ball back into the centre where it's all Carlton. It runs straight past him. Through the wood. Wood fumbles the ball. It's back to Crane. Crane swings the ball back to half forward. Burke, it's over Burke's head. Burke it's, it's, keeps going though. Fowler, Davis comes through for Carlton. Davis throws the ball out. Burke still chasing him. Knocks it away from Burke and it goes over the boundary line. Burke knocks it away from Davis, that was. It's over the boundary line for a throw in on the half forward line for Carlton. Well into time on. Time running out for the Blues as we see Roberts and Mackay. Mackay up high, down to Chandler. Chandler's kick goes back the other way. Dixon coming across. Walsh comes over the top. Gray forces it forward. Walsh is still going. He's playing the ball in front of him. Still gets bundled out of the way. He must get the free kick. Yes. No doubt in the world about that one. Wayne Walsh right in the centre of the ground. 
29 minutes gone and 30 points of difference in favour of the Tigers. Looks like McCullough's coming on for Richmond. We wait for the kick to be taken. Umpire Robinson out there, seeing the ball delivered back to Wayne Walsh. Walsh between the centre and centre half forward positions. There's his kick going out to the pocket on the outer side and O'Connell marks in defence for Carlton. O'Connell now immediately tries to get it to the halfback flank. Up goes Wood, spoiling an attempt by Quirk. Wood has it there, he's got nobody to get it to. And he just brushes his opponents aside. It's Sproul in command now. Sproul tries the hand pass. Over it goes towards Burke, who's on the forward line, but it's taken by Quirk. Quirk of Carlton back in towards the centre. Waiting there is the whale, Brian Roberts. He couldn't get away with it. Mackay of Carlton comes in, couldn't go anywhere. A chance for Kane of Richmond. He gets it over to Walsh. Walsh, a long one into the forward zone. Dill takes the mark. Dill plays on immediately for the Blues. In towards centre half forward. Jesselenko's on his own. Here's a go. Jesselenko steadies. Kicks it down. Dick Clay waiting there. Takes a beautifully timed mark in defence. Clay plays on immediately, keeping that pressure right on the Tigers. Over here it comes towards Fowler. Fowler very coolly kicks that ball to the wing position. Sheedy is waiting there. He's met by Chandler. Sheedy recovers well. Kicks to the half forward flank on the member stand side. Mike Green comes out there. Traps the ball in soccer fashion. A hand pass by Green. It'll come off. Hart pushing the ball. The Siren goes, Richmond are premiers for 1973. Richmond are premiers, and what a beauty. And the final scoreboard there reads, Richmond 16, 20, 116, Carlton 12, 14, 86. Well, there's Tommy Hafey. It's all over. The 1973 Grand Final and Hafey has now coached Richmond to three premierships. And the final scoreboard, let's have another look at it. Richmond 16, 20, 116. Carlton 12, 14, 86. Triumph indeed for Richmond. Bobby Skilton, you can't take anything away from them. Not one bit, Mike, and full credit to Tommy Hafey. He's done a magnificent job to get his team up from a fitness point of view. The fitness of the Richmond side today, it was remarkable the way in that last quarter they accepted every onslaught that was thrown at them by the, the Carlton side. Carlton came with a rush, looked as though they might be able to get back into the game, but then in the final half of the quarter, it was Richmond who steadied, and they were showing their superior fitness in the final stages of the game as they continually drove the ball forward. Every Richmond player rose to the occasion. They had uh, magnificent players. There's Keith McKenzie, the assistant coach of Carlton, a disappointed McKenzie, naturally, as the whole Carlton camp would be, but an elated Carlton. A Didn't Richmond, they fight I it say. out, though? Didn't Carlton fight it out? At no stage did they ever give it up, Mike. With Pennell uh, injured in the third quarter, Richmond virtually had 17 men. Pennell showed great courage to keep going, but uh, it was Richmond. They fully deserved their win. You can't take anything away from them at all. A magnificent effort, a team effort. There's Barry Richardson with Francis Burt. And Burke was one of the, well, the morale boosters just by being out on the ground. He and Royce Hart, what more can you ask for than inspirational players like that? Kevin Bartlett, what a second half of football Kevin Bartlett played. He probably had as many kicks in the second half as, you know, many of the players would have had for the whole game. And Bartlett, well, there would be no fitter player in the game than Bartlett from the point of view of, you know, how long Bartlett can run for. He rarely comes off the ball. He's continually there. His pace is magnificent. And time and time again in the second half, he drove Richmond forward. In the first half, it was players like Sheedy who set the pattern with three goals in the first quarter. It was a great effort. Sheedy finished with three goals, three for the game. Stewart started off in the centre, was playing well, was injured. Uh, then went to the half forward flank where he kicked two, uh, three goals. Stewart kicked three, Hart kicked three, Sheedy kicked three, Balm kicked two, and one apiece to Walsh, Roberts, Carter, Bartlett, and Green.
the roar as Royce Hart brings out the Premiership Cup. Hart holds the cup aloft. A proud Royce Hart, Graham Richmond and Tommy Hafey. Did you finish off the goal kickers, Bob? Goal kickers for Carlton. John Nichols one, Kevin Hall two, Crane two, Chandler one, Dixon one, Walls two, and Mackay two. All right, don't forget 6.30 tonight on Channel 7, Football Inquest. We'll have Tommy Hafey in the studio. We'll also have John Nichols of Carlton, Kevin Bartlett of Richmond, Wayne Walsh of Richmond, Jeff Southby, Carlton, Alex Jesselenko from Carlton. Ian Robinson, the grand final umpire, will also be there. The big replay on 7 at 7, the grand final of 1973. Well, there it is. That's the scene. A great effort from the Tigers. Full credit to Carlton, they fought it out every inch of the way. And let's face it, with our players like Armstrong and Keo, Jesselenko, not his usual self, they just weren't up to it against a team like Richmond. Although it's a magnificent spectacle, Bob, and I would advise everybody to be watching the big replay. That is for sure, Mike. It's a, you know, particularly when you see that first half of football and you see how hard every player on the ground went in. And it was a tribute to, to both sides. A Hello, tribute. Tommy's got one of his mates who came formal today. <laughs> well, there we are. That's just about the end of the scene here at the MCG. Just repeating for you the final scoreboard for the 1973 Grand Final. Don't forget Football Inquest 6.30, the big replay on 7 at 7. Richmond 16, 20, 116. Carlton 12, 14, 86. There it is. We wind it up now and return you to the studios of Channel 7. <laughs>